Dude, I have missed having the Halloween music going. It's such a vibe. The Monster Seeking Monster soundtrack of that one Jackbox game. I forgot the one, but uh, it, it, it's such a vibe. I'd highly recommend it just as casual listening, even if the songs are a minute 40 long. Oh well. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. Wow, that was a really good clap. Welcome to the stream, it is the b and stream today on this fine 2nd of October 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. It is currently Labor Day, the first Monday of October in uh, Australia, uh, which, or in New South Wales of Australia, which means uh, it's public holiday today. Uh, it's also Labor Day in South Australia, but not in the rest of the country. For some odd reason, the King's birthday fell on today in Queensland and... Uh, Victoria had an AFL Grand Final. They have a public holiday for the Sporting Grand Final. It blows my mind. They get another one as well before the end of the year for the, um, the Melbourne Cup, which is insane. I'm like, what, really? You get, you get just a free day off? So let's see if uh, we can boot up the game. Here we go. Oh, oh, I got sound. I got sound. Do I have visual? Hey, the Night Dive logo. Um, so, I'm still playing a Night Dive game. Uh, I sort of had this planned um, a bit ago. Oh my gosh, this is this is a noisy game. This is a For louder thousands game. thousands of years, the Shadow Men the Shadow have protected Men. the world of the living against threats crossing over from the spiritual plane known as Deadside. The place where everyone goes without exception when they die. I thought we go to the Rainbow Nicola Road. Nicola is the current heir to the mysteries of this ancient lineage, bearer of the Mask of Shadows. It's a bit of a third when person, goes, he third person the go there. Between the worlds, immortal voodoo warrior, taker of souls, lord of Deadside, the Shadow Man. Uh, yeah, so this is, that's all the, uh, the premise you get, but this is Shadow Man, a 1999 video game um, oh, I can't tell you who the developers were particularly, but, uh, um, it's a, it's an acclaimed published game, very similar to Turok, and in fact, I didn't even know this about Turok until a mate mentioned it to, uh, mentioned it to me, uh, Acclaim had their own, um, comic book kind of lineup, and Turok and Shadow Man were both Valiant Comics characters which Acclaim Comics decided to have, or as, through some means or, or another, got to have the superhero, but with a different character and a different backstory, becoming that superhero. Uh, Shadow Man is the other one. I wanted to do Shadow Man uh, for a Halloween. I sort of wanted to do it last year, um, but uh, the remaster, which was fairly new at the time, actually was adding in some extra stuff. It was a beta at the time of last Halloween and it was formally released in December. So I thought, let's hold off for a bit. Now, I think this is basically the version of the game. Let's dive in. We got two difficulties. The second added in as part of that uh, later update called the horror, which sort of makes the game nigh impossible. It's very, very difficult. So I'll, I need to put in my effort to, to figure out that difficulty. So we'll just go through on the normal. Uh, let's just make a new save, blah, 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 blah. This game starts off with a bit of, uh, story, but there's not too much going on. So don't worry, uh, too November, much. 1888. By my deeds am I known, and I am known as Jack. spring Jack. Have I Jack mentioned Ripper. that my first Neopet my was called Jack the Ripper? And they are true I adopted him, and I didn't realize what the name I was. I to my heart. Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride. Catherine Eddowes, Mary Kelly, and loved them. I hope you like the Moonlight the Sonata. Mortal, but the immortal power I sought within the sordid confines of their bodies, the still beating organ of the soul, was not to be found. The You're telling me these mortal the people fire. didn't have immortality I inside them? I must them? therefore perform that bloody ritual upon myself. Stay your hand, Jack, and listen to what I have to say. How did you find this place? Who are you? My name is Legion, for we are many. The immortal power that you seek does exist. It does indeed lie within the souls, but only within certain ones, certain dark souls. My God, what are you that you can produce such things from thin air? Merely an explorer. Uh, from software, I guess. What is it that you want from me? You are an architect by trade, are you not? I am. Then I would have you build a cathedral to pain. 
a place where you and I and others like us may join together, a place of asylum for all of the unique and misunderstood individuals that will follow you as the time of Armageddon approaches. And this the guy's gotta wipe his mouth, bro. I'm not misunderstanding that. Bro needs a bib. By souls of Greetings, Bob. How's it going? We shall harness their power. Oh, the the rat chilling in the back there. Woo! <laughs> there he goes. And where might I build this cathedral of yours? Across the veil. It, was Jack the Ripper ever known for building cathedrals? Of those who have Ooh, wah, in the place known You're down with the side. sickness. Then, if I am to join you, I must die. It is prophecy. We cannot fail. For we are many. For we are many! <laughs> well, the easiest way to kill Jack the Ripper is to literally convince Amen him that he's got a man. higher purpose in the afterlife. They still never found Jack the Ripper, right? Like, that was a weird one. Like, when I found out, I was like, holy snap, they... No one figured out who he was. Just sort of faded into obscurity, it's been a while. This is the smallest double bed. You are really straining this one. Ah. Ah. I, d I do have nightmares about Americans. There's a darkness coming. What's the problem, Magneta? I had a dream, Shadowman. A real bad dream. A dead side dream. The five are here. The heralds of the apocalypse. Deacons the five horsemen of the apocalypse. Fear. The end's coming, Shadowman. An ancient prophecy tells of the return of a great evil to dead side. A terrible force yeah, yeah. Souls but they could never figure out like who exactly he was in the end, right? Into this world like it was just like he, he just I must stop this happened evil from bringing about the end of all things. Only you can One of the OG mass murderers. Though. You were the walker between the worlds. I can't go dead side, and Jaunty's next to useless in both worlds. You are the only Rip one Jaunty. who can do anything about this. As it ever was. But you ain't never confronted anything like this evil. It's so pure, not even the ancient protectors ah. of the Dark Souls could destroy it. They could only banish it from dead side. They knew it would come back one day. Hence the prophecy telling of its return. The power of the ancients is all but gone now. And the Dark Souls that evil desires lie unprotected. What you gotta do, Shadow Man, is to go dead <laughs> You're telling me evil desires the Dark Souls. Souls. Did evil desire Bloodborne and Elden Ring at the same time? Evil them to its terrible heart. Okay, so let me get this straight. If I don't recover these dark souls, then the world's gonna end. Am I right? Dude, you this guy is peak shit. male physique. Look, I gotta go. I've got a lot to do. Take Deacon's file and meet me at dawn at the church on the hill. I've kept your stuff safe for you. <laughs> I hate this shit. Just a pawn in Nettie's master plan. She moves me in mysterious ways, and brother, sometimes she really brother she moves, moves me. <laughs> Can't do nothing about it since, nice as you please, she knitted my ribs into the mask of shadows. I got nothing left, anyways. My fault, Luke's dead, and mom and pop too. I deserve everything I get, every bad thing that comes my way. Look at him taking his boat down. Oh, watch out! Ooh, cutting that corner behind me. A nowhere place. The asshole of the universe. So, if you've never heard of this game, I actually think this is like a sort of sleeper... Mm, uh, gem is going to be an interesting word, but it's definitely a game that, that people gem? should know about. The Night Dive, the recent Night Dive port with my boy Samuel Villarreal, yet again, lead engine programmer. That, that boy does amazing things, but I've already been gushing about him for two weeks in a row. Uh, it's fine. Uh, this game is, um, also, damn, damn, pits. <laughs> this game is, uh, what I would like to describe as, um, a Metroid game. People will use the term Metroidvania, and I'm always like, nah, let's not slap Vania on it. There's a very clear Metroid, there's a very clear Castlevania divide. Symphony of the Night incorporates Metroid aspects. Rip. 
<laughs> um, you got guns. Actually, no. Do you, you don't have guns at this point in time. <laughs> we, we don't get the guns. Um, and you'll probably never see me ever use the guns. Uh, this game has an interesting light and dark world mechanic where the light world is useless because you can't do anything in the light world. And uh, we're starting in the light world. There! A pit bull. Huh? I know, that's like a rot while of itself. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we hit the, the minus screen, we've got Nettie's file here, and you can briefly skim through this, particularly giving uh, notes of the serial killers that are involved in this game. Uh, this, wow. Six foot two, wow. I, are these real people? You can, you can pause if you want to <laughs> read these, but it is a very significant amount of plot. A very significant amount of back writing. Uh, if you want to learn more about various serial killers with various serial killer iconography and things like that. Um, most importantly, I guess, these serial killers, uh, I guess, occupy various different points in time. Like, Jack the Ripper is old. Or oh, I guess this is Jack 2. This is another guy who's like Jack the Ripper. Um, because this is all 1999. But the OG Jack the Ripper, that's 1888. Super old. Also, is that a picture of him? Hmm, looks very similar to this guy. Um, so yeah. Uh, lots of stuff there. You also saw me pick up a cadeau. We'll get more into that. I hope you like the nailed hands and the, the pause screen. Um, you'll be seeing me enter that screen a fair bit, um, because we'll need to do that. But there is a weapon wheel, because, uh, uh, this game runs on the Kex engine, as in Samuel Villarreal's wonderful, uh, gift to the world, that generic engine that seems to do the best job of recreating every single one of these old games, no matter what they were running on, whether it be Quake, or Quake 2, or Turok, or, s uh, I was gonna say System Shock, not System Shock. He didn't do that one. Um, or, uh, uh, Forspoken, or, uh, Doom 64? That one's a fun one. Um, or Power Slave. Uh, a bunch of games. So, uh, I've done everything. I've turned off motion blur on this game. Uh, but, uh, just a heads up, uh, that this game looks very, very nice. Very, very fun. We've got this whole area off to the side here, but you can't really do anything. Um... You can sort of play around with how physics work around here. These dogs are dogs. They're just dogs. They're chillin'. We get ahead inside this church where we will meet uh, the character who we saw earlier. Good ol' Nettie. Betty? Hey there, Mike. Glad you could make it. There's strong how could I voodoo magic. Offer? How could I ever refuse you, Agnetta? You can't. I'm simply irresistible. I hope you read the file I gave you. And read it real well. Between the lines, you'll find the signs. You got my stuff? Come on in, honey. Ooh. You know, on the way over here, I got to thinking about these dark souls. If they're so damn dangerous, why didn't the ancients just destroy them? Because that's impossible. Their power is their immortality. If evil ever manages to implant these immortal souls into its monstrous slaves, can you imagine the carnage an immortal, unbeatable army would bring to the Earth? That's Apocalypse, Shadowman. That's the end. Okay, okay. So, so, I really so what you're telling me is the they made another Dark Souls, the world would be that, over. But where do I find The number them? of people who skip work Govi, just to play Elden Ring. Each Govi, Govi. has been by the most powerful voodoo. Not even the greatest Bokor or Mambo can open them to release the dark soul within. Believe me, I've tried. But a Shadow Man, or something even more powerful, just might be able to do it. Release the dark soul and take it into yourself. But be warned, the dark souls are a pure and ancient oh, evil. <laughs> the Zed fighting on his shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just get this thing over with. You got my stuff? Right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jesus, Luke. He's alive. Alive and in pain. I gotta help him. He's dead, Mike. You know that. I know, but I saw. It's understandable that you still have strong feelings for your brother. That's why the bear works for you. Connecting you to that side. Use it now, Mike. 
Go dead side and find Jonty. He's waiting for you at the Merrow Gates. He's got something to show you. Okay. And Mike? Yeah? If you need me, I'll be here. Now, go see Jonty and get them dark souls. There we go. Uh, there we go. You can grab this as well. And you can actually grab a few more over here. Uh, I'm going to try sort of my best to collect uh, everything. I'm definitely going to try and collect all the Dark Souls. Uh, but all the, the Kiddos, which we have 666 in the game and 120 Dark Souls. This is uh, sort of, imagine it a little bit like Mario 64. You're going around collecting all Mike, the souls. Use the bear. Go dead, side. Use the bear. So if you open up your pause menu at 1, you got guns now. You can actually uh, aim to the side, you know, pure gangster. Um, but we've also got the teddy bear. The teddy bear allows you to warp from one location to the next. Now, uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> last version of this release, because uh, Nettie and uh, we'll meet Jaunty eventually, uh, both will give you tips throughout the game. Uh, the recent patch allows you to walk outside the church, I believe. Mike, there's no time to waste. <laughs> Use get, Luke's bear. Get Nettie inside. to tell you that you're wasting your time. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, the uh, the night dive port, the very recent one, uh, adds uh, these little tips, telling you what you actually can be doing at places. Because this game gets a little hard to navigate. Use the bear. Get told that you're a slowpoke, and eventually you will warp into the world of the dead side. I am the lord of dead side. Shadow born at the confluence of worlds to walk between. Life side is without the meaning that my partly living possesses here in dead side, where the darkness is manifest at the edges of reason. As a god, I step forth upon the writhing, separating surface of the dead side serpent. What sleep is, is that? Here? Is that him? What That's the dead side serpent, the, the guy with the top hat. Coilings of the snake's mortal shuffling. Weapon in my hand, my hand, the arcing death blow at the end of all things. The horror, the horror. I embrace it. So, uh, yes, we have now entered the world of dead side. I will uh, partially keep checking. Uh, the, the bit, you can walk back to live side. Your ass back to dead side now and go speak to John T. There's a lot of these lines of dialogue. I'm probably not going to experience every single one of them because otherwise it would be me checking the, the, um, the screen a lot. But, uh, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, like, weird loose dialogue basically telling you, yeah, you're super off the beaten path. Uh, suddenly your gun is now, uh, what is referred to as the shadow gun. Uh, where it fires this kind of shot. Uh, you can lock onto targets. You can also, there's a first person mode if you want to be that kind of guy, but uh, you really don't have to. Because the game sort of locks on for you. Um, they're also going to keep screaming. And they drop uh, what I can only describe as red lungs. They're supposed to be like life force or something like that. Uh, you don't have to defeat enemies, and every time you leave a level and come back, uh, the enemies all come back, so it's sort of not worth your time to get them if you're going to keep going back. But look at that thing! What is that? Hello there, Michael. How's that treating you? Jaunty, kindly refer to me as Shadow Man. Michael Lawal has no place here in Dead Side. It's Whatever, incredible. Mickey, it's again. Seems like simply ages since I last set me eyes on your happy smiling mug. The feeling's mutual. I suppose you've been away dallying with the old battle axe, giving her one with some of that righteous voodoo so she can stay forever young? Something like that. She's been filling your head with her fated pillow talk again, I'd bet. Doomsday in an army giddy until you're drunk with the stuff. She did happen to mention a certain prophetic dream she's been having. Did she now? Well, for once I think the old witch might be right. See that bloody big black tower yonder? How could I miss it? Well, old Bruegel, the medieval painter blokey, was just telling me the other day that he thought it looked remarkably like a picture he once did. Is that Peter Bruegel? No, Seamus, his distant Irish cousin. Anyways, he was quite shocked, so he was, at the terrible mess that bloody thing's making. Appearing out of nowhere and tearing its way through the place like there's no tomorrow. Which, given what Nettie's saying, might not be too far from the truth. Any idea what's going on in there? Nope, and I shan't be knocking on the front door to find out, neither. 
All I'll say is, if there's something wicked heading this way, it'll be coming from in there. Let him mention the Dark Souls. Can you tell me any more about them? I'm afraid I'll have to reply in the negative again, Michael. Suffice it to say, Nettie's told me that they're bloody powerful, well nigh indestructible, and shouldn't fall into the wrong hands. Any idea where they might be? What am I, a Dark Soul travel guide now? I suppose you could try all of the ancient sacred places. I mean, he is chilling next to a bunch of bonfires. I just hope that none of them souls have ended up in that filthy big black tower. From what Nettie was saying, some of them already have, which is all the more reason for me to be pushing on. Open the gates, Johnny. Places to go, people to see, eh, Michael? Just open the gates, Johnny. Did I ever tell you about the time me and Attila the Hun were playing skittles with the guillotine heads of the French aristocracy? Johnny. All right, all right, keep your bloody hair on. Which, looking at your shining bonds, may prove to be rather difficult. Open sesame! And if you be wanting to pop by and chat a while, I'll still be here. It's just a shame we can't share a drop of the hard stuff together by a rod and peep fire. I don't drink with snakes. Oh man, what do you got against snakes, bro? Jeez. Uh, so yeah, so uh, let's just continue on the game. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of loose dialogue and extra kinds of uh, additional goodies that were added in as part of this uh, night dive re-release. Uh, so if you played Shadow Man uh, as a young kid. Uh, good on you, first of all, <laughs> but also, yeah, if you played, uh, there's, um, I think the, the, uh, the peak this version, is the dead side. more the introduction. Wasteland. For nothing beyond the bone-packed gates, here Luke, my dear lost brother, wanders alone amidst the I aimless ranks of those me, who cannot die. He still, with the ache for death, I too may discover within my blighted heart. Here, the true darkness at the heart of all things is made real. What we see in death's dominion is as void as a dead man's gaze, as cold as the light from a dying star. So, pretty much every area you enter will have one of these little introduction bits. Uh, I'm playing with a controller, by the way. Um, but you'll see things uh, like this, for example. Oh my gosh. Please, please get this guy. There we go. Because sometimes, uh, in fact often, enemies will fall over and need one last tap with the shadow gun in order to truly defeat. And, uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you, don't, if you don't kill them there, they'll just get back up and they gotta take an extra hit. It's not too bad though, because uh, the shadow gun has no ammo, really. You just keep firing. Um... It's all down left, left uh, or right trigger, left mouse, whichever you're playing. I'm playing with the controller. I'm just going to mention that again. Um, but yeah, this game was released on the PlayStation, PC, Nintendo 64, and the Dreamcast back in the day. I think the Dreamcast was pretty much the definitive version. Uh, I have the old PC version, and I never actually played it. But I did, indeed, uh, boot up the Nintendo 64 version and do a complete retro achievement set of that one. And uh, there's definitely a lot of differences uh, between that version and this version, particularly... Um, uh, you you noted how or you remember there were five serial killers. Well, later in the game, uh, we'll be uh, going through five levels to defeat each of the serial killers. Uh, all the original versions of the game had three, uh, due to budgetary reasons or time reasons, uh, one or the other. Um, three of the serial killers all appear in one level, and it sort of crams them all in together and it doesn't really feel quite right, and you can definitely tell. Uh, so this version, super restores that all back together. There's also uh, an additional level as well as uh, new enemies that were written about but were never actually implemented. I'm just exploring around this area a bit. Uh, ultimately you've got a, you know, a path that you'll need to continue on through. Um, but I'm going to try my best to sort of go around and pick up all these Kedos. The more you can pick up, the better you'll go, uh, because, uh, spoilers, it's not really that. Um, it's not that much of a spoiler, because we'll find out very soon. Uh, but when you collect a hundred of them, uh, you can trade them at a place very, very soon, and in fact you'll visit it before you even get a hundred, uh, for a bit of extra life. Uh, let's see, do I have a button? Do I have a button? Well, no. But the thing in the bottom right, which will show up every so often, um, that red is your health, and, uh, you can get one more little notch for each of the hundred caddos. Uh, you may be going the 666. 
can't you get six notches? And the answer is no. Also, I hope you like enemies jump scaring you and then firing poop at you. Uh, that's pretty much going to be the uh, enemy roster for a while. There's people who throw poop at me. He's, he's really going ham with the poop. Um, but yeah, I think this is probably the most ultimate of the Night Dive remasters because there is an element of, um, like an incomplete product in all the versions of the game. Uh, the recent Power Slave, um, you know, remaster, which incorporates level design components from both the Saturn and the PlayStation versions is interesting, but neither game was really incomplete. But this game, I think, notoriously, there are parts of the game that are incomplete. There's files on the, on the disc that just are unused. There's a whole level, uh, which maybe I might experience this stream. We'll see. Uh, this game will definitely take a few streams, so don't worry about, uh, about it being too quick. And I'll try my best to show off everything. Uh, that is a very tremendous jump. Um, controls. Uh, it's probably got better controls than back in the day. I want to get those bots because I, I can never guarantee which one's a Kato and which one's not. Sometimes just none of them are. Oh well. Life is like a Kato. It sometimes never exists. And sometimes it does. Um, so there's a couple of... Uh, oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if there's one thing that all these Night Dive re-releases uh, probably share in common, it's that, well, they're all first person or third person and shooters, so why don't they all control the same? So, this remaster, it's proper twin stick. You play on the Nintendo 64, it is not twin stick. I believe it is uh, look strafe mode. It's like you gotta hold down a button if you wanna strafe left and right. I think probably the lock on button. Uh, in this version, yeah, it's, it's pretty much just a shooter. I've got one stick that looks around, click the stick in, your first person, A jumps, B ducks and rolls, and you can tap left stick and you'll do a turn if you need a quick turn. Uh, X opens up the wheel, Y puts away your weapons. You'll see that uh, climbing things is actually a lot easier when you put away your weapons than once you put something in your left hand. Uh, well, you've got no hands to grab onto ledges, so you're gonna need to make sure you keep putting them away. But it's convenient, that's one button. Um, uh, also, yeah, you've got two hands, so uh, left trigger and right trigger, or left and right hands, respectively. It does mean as well, you can, in theory, uh, put the gun in your left hand and you start shooting as with your left hand, which is very interesting. Uh, and also, right button just lets you look around if you want to. It's probably a legacy button more than anything. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, I think it plays fine on the Nintendo 64. I never felt like there was any, uh, you know, lack of buttons going on. Um, but the Nintendo 64 version did leverage the, uh, memory pack. And then I had a very interesting, uh, experience where I felt the, um, the memory pack. This just gets you through this area a lot quicker because then you don't have to do the lap around. You get a shortcut over here, uh, when you walk back to this area. And we'll find these gates throughout the game. These are basically your, have you been collecting enough of the Dark Souls? Because uh, you'll see it kind of lines up with the uh, iconography in the bottom right. Although the icons are not all the same. I ought to go visit Nettie. You, you're giving me a tip by standing still? Whoa. For reference, uh, yeah, the game's going to, you know, potentially let you go back to Jaunty. You can see, talk to Jaunty. Have you got enough giant souls to fight, Vendry? <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll see it t prompts you to talk to Nettie and Johnny if you want. That's just because there's a new line of dialogue, and literally, like, half the dialogue is before you even, like, get to do anything in this game. Like, th there's one for just saying, hey, I haven't found the first Dark Soul yet. It's literally there. The, the first Dark Soul is literally up there. Looks like someone left me a note. We <laughs> call the Grand Souls. Yeah, exactly. Now we have this book. If you need more exposition, you can totally read through this book. Uh, but it's mostly to show off, um, I guess, law exposition reasons why you can do the things. Particularly, note this. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of fun things that just... It's art, but it actually does tell you what things are. So in particular, uh, you notice that uh, we have... 
How about, I'll go through that in a moment. I'll go through that in a moment. It'll make more sense. Um, you can hear uh, a little beating heart. That's your sign that there is a Dark Soul uh, right near you. And then you don't see it. Um, here's another gate. Note that now there is one purple thing lit up. Uh, that is important because if you try to open it, you're not strong enough to open the door. These are your barriers. You won't be able to progress in the game until you've gotten enough Dark Souls to get through those barriers. You can shoot the Gobi, and there you go. The power of the Dark Souls, I embrace it. There you go. Great. Also, also that's very hot. <laughs> so just know that. Uh, the game's telling you a lot of things. Now, now, if we go to the gate, we are now able. You'll see that uh, that par kind of went up a little bit because we have one notch in it. As well as also, when you charge your shadow gun, well, you can charge it now, uh, you actually deal a bit more damage if you charge it up that little amount. The more Dark Souls you pick up, the more gates you can open. You can also charge up your shadow gun a little more and deal more damage. That's how it works out. Now, if we go back to this prophecy, Note how there are 10 notches on this wheel, just like in the actual thing. And you'll see, uh, using tally marks, there's one on the first one, two on the next one, four on the next one, and so on. That is the number of Dark Souls you need in order to get that wheel. I think it's um, uh, exclusive, so as in, I need two more than the previous one. I think you need to maybe do the math in order to figure out how many is required for those last ones, because uh, that sure is a lot of Dark Souls. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got more lore basically telling, telling, you know, the creatures of the souls of the evil, uh, they're entrusted with the Govi to protect the dark souls, and then there's a guy who sort of, uh, tried to unite the madmen and killers and build asylum. Hmm, funny how that's the case. So, uh, the sorceress has a dream, entrusts the, the man of the shadow, and the serpent, oh, the serpent. And, uh, you open the coffin gates. And so on. It's a prophecy. Also, also, excuse me? The sorceress fell into a deep trance? Hmm. The end. So, uh, yeah. This also describes all the items you'll actually get in the game. Uh. Like, every single one of them. We haven't even gotten into them. Um. As well as also these uh, little sacred marks and all these like fancy things. Here you go, here's the line of dialogue that just says, yeah, you can offer the, uh, the things. Uh, also, this map, which is indeed in the manual of the game, um, although this is an updated map because there's more parts of this game. But it's basically, yeah, if you don't know where anything is in the game, where any of the items are, literally those are the gates you need to pass. Uh, these are the names of the areas, the bits in, like, the text is like, oh, these are the items in there. Uh, you can, so you can see, uh, oh gosh, where are we? We're in the prophecy chamber. We just went past the one gate up the top there. Use that map to kind of get a hint of where you need to go. There's no more exposition. The game's pretty, pretty hands off from this point on. Um, but it is rather curious that there's so much of this, uh, stuff. I'm going to switch the gun to my right hand because I am super not used to it being on my left. <laughs> Now we can take on this enemy a little quicker. Just a little. Uh, but you'll see you're immediately prompted by a two gate, so we won't be able to continue going on uh, wherever we are, which is the Pass of Shadow. Uh, which has uh, two spawns on the same map, because this is technically the same map. Uh, most of the maps, such as this one we're going to, just has one Unsolved spawn point. Souls that drift beyond the marrow one fast travel, sorry. An eternity of waiting. This infinite limbo, this wasteland, this untamed, unnatural afterbirth I command with my endless sharpness. What ineffable secrets are whispered within the paths of shadow? What red edge realities rising bleak above the blasted sky? This skyline. guy's a poet and he doesn't Dead know it. Wing, duppy, zombie mother. Hey, Deadwing is currently the highest rated Porcupine Tree album on Rate Your Music. It keeps fluctuating. I don't know what's going on with that. Speaking of Porcupine Tree, a uh, new Stephen Wilson album, which I kept mentioning uh, a bunch. It's good! I was actually genuinely surprised at how much I did like the Harmony Codex. I thought, um, 
I was a little skeptic with the singles. I was like, how does this all connect with each other? And I think the part that really does connect uh, the whole album is this uh, wonderful mixture of the uh, electronic and the acoustic sounds. He's got this piano, which is always like lingering in the mix somewhere. Um, sometimes it's super forefront. Uh, forefront. Uh, songs like uh, Economies of Scale, it's like, yeah, like how can you not hear the piano? Um, but even songs like, uh, um, what's one? Uh, what Life Brings, it's like, yeah, you, you know, you hear it, but it's like, oh, it actually does kind of set the ground line for the whole song there. Um, even some of the other ones, uh, it's, it's very downplayed on the title track, The Harmony Codex, uh, with all the electronics and the, the, the synth going on, but it's, uh, you know, it's still there. And I think it all connects together like that. Um, like probably uh, all of our favorite Stephen Wilson albums, it's moody and uh, very... Uh, very rich, very, you know, large soundscape going on, so, uh, very well produced. I enjoyed it a ton. Would recommend. I've listened to it way too many times. <laughs> I don't think, uh, turning wheel is, a uh, part of, uh, <laughs> part of that, though, so. Um, but yeah, basically the, the structure of the game is, um, imagine it's like Banjo-Kazooie, I guess. That was your hub world. You'll need more, uh, not jiggies, you'll just need, uh, Dark Souls in order to progress through that hub world. Uh, but there's also Dark Souls and things to find in the hub world. Um, as well as also other items that will help you progress. I guess Banjo Kazooie doesn't have a backtrack. Oh, it does. It does a little bit, because you need the, uh, the e cup dokum. Well, the skulls. You gotta say it with the accent every time. Uh, this is, I, I assume, just blood water, by the way. It, there's, you'll, you'll very clearly tell what lava is in this game. Uh, this is not lava. Um, there's apparently a setting. They use a different texture for the, uh, Dreamcast version. And there's a setting in this game that lets you, uh, use the Dreamcast texture, but, I don't know, I'm just going with the default here. Um. But yeah, it's interesting because this came out in 1999. And, uh, it did fine, but I never heard anyone ever talk about it. I just saw, hey, it existed. This is a, a 3D platformer adventure game from 1999, and it's like, oh, how come no one talks about it? Could be because of a slightly lackluster sequel. I think people still liked Shadow Man, the, uh, I was gonna say the second coming, but, uh, look it up, they put a two instead of the S for second, which is weird because a two is backwards. A two doesn't even go the right way. That's lava. <laughs> you can tell what lava looks like. Uh, I think this is the perfect opportunity to mention how, um, I guess, really strong the soundtrack is. It's full of like these like droning synths and then the, you know, just these like ornamental like bits and melodies on top. Sometimes, you know, it gets gets a bit going, like later in this level, there's a bit more of a percussion element going on. Uh, but all of these songs are like very downbeat, very moody. Which is, is great, it's super strong. Um, also, yeah, just a heads up, if you ever get like too lost, uh, just know most levels? Actually, I guess back to this map. Uh, a lot of the levels are dead ends, um, except for the Asylum. Also, you should probably exit before that sound loops so much that it annoys you. Um, so most of these levels are pretty dead end. Um, I will, you'll definitely have to backtrack to a lot of them because there's a lot of items that you'll need in order to uh, go back and get all the Dark Souls. Uh, but fortunately, uh, if you're ever unsure, again, rely on this. When it says find four Dark Souls, look down. There's 13 in this level. The game already is giving you a nice hint of how many you can actually pick up. And you can turn off that feature if you're a bit of a pro player, but trust me, you'll need it. This game is very labyrinthian, very kind of maze-like. You will get lost, you will probably need a bit of an extra hand, like trying to tell you where is the next thing you need. The game gives you that. Take that opportunity. There's no, there's no shame, there's no shame in needing a little bit of a hint in order to beat Shadow Man the first time. Um, I think they charge, uh, I think it's a 20 US dollar game. 
So, uh, but yeah, no, it's got a fair bit of content. This thing, like, if you're going to, like, properly 100%, will probably be, like, 13 hours of going back for all the, the kiddos and stuff, but, uh... I am on fire! I like these little, little grubs everywhere. I can't describe all the enemies, so I can only assume what they describe them as is, uh, ghouls, basically beings that are sort of driven to madness or some other kind of thing by being in dead side. But like, everyone is dead goes here. Look at that, it's a dark soul! So yeah, in order to fully continue, we'll need to at least grab uh, two of these, but you'll probably want to grab as many as you can. Also, you may pick up an item in the levels, which will allow you to, uh, you know, get more of the dark souls. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a game of its time. Some of the level design is very just like, wow, platforms. <laughs> um, but I don't know, there's something kind of endearing about it. And I love, I think we're at that like perfect point in time where remastering an old game like this is very, uh, I, I guess, yeah, endearing is the right word where it's like, this is an era of game that, uh, you know, if you never played this one, this will make you real, really feel like, you know, it's a 90s game. Also, uh, <laughs> unlike Mario 64, which I'm still amazed that Super Mario, uh, I mean, it, it makes a little bit of sense in Mario 64, but I'm glad that, like, every other game at the time realized this. It's kind of annoying to keep backing out to a, a hub world every single time you pick up a collectible, especially when some of the collectibles are super close to each other. It's like, in Mario 64, it's like, the number of times, like, I pick up the 100 stars, and it's like, oh, sorry, the 100 coins, oh, you don't have to exit the level. Then I pick up the 8 red coins, oh, you gotta exit the level. It's like, but the, but the big boo haunt the stars right there. Nope. You gotta do it again. Leave the level, come back. It adds a bit of playtime. I love these little guys as well. They're like, Shackle Man. They, they say it in like this grisly voice for some reason. None of the enemies are particularly threats, although these guys uh, fling double poop at you for some reason. Lots of these guys all over the place as well. Um, I hope you appreciate how claustrophobic some of the levels are as well. I'm not too sure. I assume they did a bit of a remastered job with the uh, textures. I'm not sure. I'm hopefully going to say they didn't do any uh, ups AI upscaling of the textures. Uh, not for an ethic reason, for a technical reason. Like, I'm just hoping that these are higher quality, just raw assets that they're using. And given that they've taken, you know, they've got the source code, I think they used the source code of the, the, uh, the Dreamcast version to sort of build this one as well. Which is always fun when you've got the source code to make a version of the game, and then you sort of look back from a technical basis to figure out how did the other versions work. This game has a, uh, rather noteworthy, famous PlayStation version for being a bit bad, a bit, you know, underwhelming. Um, and given that it's 1999, the PlayStation is like, you know, it's nearly on its way out. Um, and this game is a Dreamcast game. It's very ambitious, I feel, for what its scale is. I don't know how much of the game is exactly like stripped down. I never played the, the PlayStation version, so... Uh, unlike Turok, no order map, so... Also, yeah, you're gonna have to... You're gonna have to wing your knowledge of the levels. Uh, but if you are super duper suck, you know, open up the console, turn on no clip, have a romp, have a peruse, you know. <laughs> Climbing along. We got, yeah, some, some very Zelda-like climbing. It sort of controls a little bit similar to Zelda in 
uh, some aspects. Uh, usually you don't have to interact with too many things. Like it said, yeah, you can press a button to interact with a button. But uh, yeah, these ledges, you just see it. You just climb across and then you've got a... I'm trying to think what's a... Actually, it's sort of Tomb Raider-y where you got to hit up to like prime yourself to jump off. Because if you hit jump, you drop down. Uh, this area, by the way, is, like, sort of optional. Just kind of wandered over to it, but, uh, nothing exactly hints that you needed to go here right away. But, uh, you'll find this. This is our first, uh, secondary weapon, the Assen. Uh, if you notice those little yellow teeth things, like I'm collecting here, um, you've got a secondary bar, uh, and you can use, uh, you know, that... That's, uh, ammo, basically, for a secondary weapon. Uh, you'll enjoy that this gate is a level 6 gate, so, uh, there's no hope. You are not opening this gate that soon. Um, you can try, you can try. You're not gonna be able to open that. But don't worry, if you forget, just remember, it's on the map. There's a 6 there, you see that? Uh... But yeah, it lets you set people on fire, which is very nice. Uh, most notably, uh, if you kill people not with the shadow gun, they don't drop health. Um, it's generally fine, but uh, yeah. I love this area, it's a bit terrifying. There's an actual, like, temple in this level, and uh, casually, we can't continue going in this direction to get there. Uh, also, don't worry if you do exactly what I did and die, because what happens when you die, you literally just reappear at the very beginning of the level. Nothing changed, no harm done, no no foul spent. Uh, there is an achievement for beating the game without dying. Uh, so if you if you want to do that one, you're gonna have to you know open up the pause menu and save scum. You, you're just gonna have to do that. This game is there's too many jumps to not die in. There's too many jumps. Uh, the penalty is not that bad, to be honest. Like, going back from the beginning of the map, it's not really that that bad. In fact, actually, it's not even just the beginning of the map. It's also, uh, once you've got the spawn point, it's where you spawn. So you might be actually be in the middle of the level. Which gets a little confusing when we get to some of the later levels and you're not sure where anything is. Um, but very forgiving. Very, very forgiving. I think the original game was also like that as well, so very forgiving, and and I appreciate it. That makes sense, you know. Why punish the player for like so much time when it's like ah, it's literally just platforming? Uh, there's no other checkpoints, so uh, this guy is having a fun time being in the uh, in the ground there. Sure. Get that gun charge. You never know what you're about to see. Whoop! There's <laughs> lots of dudes. Time to flame them. Uh, so yeah, don't feel bad about using your secondary weapons, even though you don't get a lot of ammo. So you probably want to combine it with uh, an existing weapon. Well, you combine it with your shadow gun, basically. You want to get all those bot shots. Keep going on. I love how he's aiming that high up. He's just like, yeah, no, there's an enemy there. I'll try and get him. Let's get this, which reveals this rope. I believe everything you do stays in a level, so for the most part. I think maybe boxes need to be repushed if you ever need to push a box again. There we go. <laughs> I know there's more guys, he's looking around. We'll come back to this room, because, you know, you see a bridge. That, that's not scenery, that's that's actual part of the level design. Just a bit later. Yeah, there's something fun and very brooding about, uh, kind of this, um... I guess the term hellscape is probably, uh, fitting, I guess, because, I mean... You're not in hell, you're in the, uh, effectively purgatory. The place between the worlds. But definitely where the dead people are. The living people don't chill here. Lots of Kaidos, by the way, so, uh, that's already... Whoops. 
That's already nearly 50 out of 666. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if uh, some later levels get a bit more generous with them. Um, I will say one thing that's generous is pausing the game and seeing that there are indeed 25 out of 59 on this one level. That was something that the, uh, the at least the Nintendo 64 version I played didn't do. It didn't tell you how many Kados were on the level you're on. Or Dark... Actually, did it tell you how many... I think it told you how many Dark Souls, but it didn't tell you about the Kados. So if you're trying to collect all 512 in that version, which is a lot fewer... Um, yeah, good luck on that one. Keep a list. Keep an actual list. Know how many you have when you enter the level, how many when you exit. Just makes it a lot easier. Um, this game also has uh, some cheat codes, some more secrets, and uh, you can find the, the cheats if you navigate to a certain... Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You didn't... I, I believe it did tell you how many Dark Souls were in the level you were in. But yeah, not the Kados. Uh, there is no reward for getting every single one of them. But in that version, as I mentioned, there's 512. You need 500 in order to max out your health. So you're cutting it very thin. You probably want to keep track of that if you want to max out your health. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not too needed to max out your health. Um... But this version makes it a bit easier because it's 666. There's just more Kado generally, but also the extra three levels in the game definitely, you know, give you a bit more time to pad it out. Uh, the extra three levels also means they spread out the Dark Souls. So there might be some locations in this version of the game that don't have Dark Souls. So for a remaster, it's like, well, it's sort of so different from the original. And the only thing I wish is that this version came with the original, because it doesn't. Um, you sort of have to buy the original separately, which is a bit of a shame, but Turok was in the same boat. I think most of the, the, the Night Dive re-releases sort of are. Um, Quake and Quake 2 are not, though. You can actually... Actually, I don't think Quake 2 came with the original. Not the, the recent Night Dive port, which, uh, I'll get to that. I actually played it, finally. I, I started playing it a little bit, but I never, like, committed to beating it. And now I have beaten the main Quake 2 and the Quake 64, uh, levels. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it runs on the same engine as this, and it's like, yep, it's as good as all of the Night Dive Kex engine, you know, ports have been so far. The warp is here, by the way. So, uh, if you ever go to your menu, you can now warp to this part of the level from here. We've been picking up all the Dark Souls so far, so there's no more to actually find for the moment. We must defeat Yort, though. You saw that. Uh, Yort is, uh, not in the original version of the game. Uh, this whole area served more as, like, a trial to get an item, which, uh, generally all the, um, all of these temple areas sort of are that. Um, nearly every level has an item to pick up, and that item generally is something that actually will, you know, give you access to places you couldn't get to before. This one's probably the most minor of all of them. I don't think there's any other... Um, I don't think there's any other places you can really go to. You keep seeing these uh, blocks, which we can't deal with just yet. Um, I don't think we'll be able to deal with them this stream. I think there's too many, too many levels, too many places to go on the way. It's a lot quicker to control than Tomb Raider, I'll tell you that. You do have to get a bit used to how that climbing works, because, uh, yeah, on a first playthrough I just kept being like, oh, I'm just falling in the lava, I'm really not getting used to how this goes. But no, you'll get there, you'll get there. Uh, you'll keep seeing all these, like, little side cuts and stuff, and... Oops. And then it's just like, oh. Yeah, good luck trying to make that jump. Uh, if you don't know how this game works, by the way, and what all the items and things you unlock are... I love these spikes. They're just spikes. Uh, if you don't know what all the items are, um... Here's a challenge to yourself. Try and guess what the items in this game will be. Uh, and what they'll do. Uh, we've definitely seen, uh, at least opportunities for two items to show up. Um, 
obviously all this lava with things after the lava is probably a good tell. Um, but there was one other one if you if you spotted that one. Actually, two things I guess because we got all those blocks as well. Three things. Sorry. Uh, that, there, that is indeed a window. It, uh, it's not the, the clearest, but that is indeed a window. Here we go, so we got more lava in the way. More lava. You thought it was a dead end, but no, it was just an opportunity to look up. And then you push this block, and now it's on the lava. As well as the guy who's like, Shadow Man! Little two head guy with no legs. Actually, yeah, maybe he's got little tiny legs, but uh, certainly not, you know. I wouldn't do a marathon on those. It's a bit of a janky jump, to be honest. Everyone likes a good guillotine, just casually, casually in the middle of wherever we are. Probably some uh, meaning to some of this iconography. I just look at this going, ah yes, box. Yeah, it's a box. Uh, this game came out the same year as um, Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver as well, so uh, maybe you'll, you'll feel some uh, similarities. Now I'm casually gonna save here because walking through all of that is a bit painful, and for some odd reason. This remaster adds in a boss, right here, and this boss kicks your butt. Holy shit. Is I'm it the Lord of Dead Side. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, this boss, uh, oh, let me try and describe how he works. He basically is a giant, well, okay, he's a giant slug. For reference, if you die, which you definitely will because it's a one-hit death when you fall off, you gotta kind of walk through that whole bit again. It's it's a bit of extra time. It's a bit of extra time. Load the save. Quick saving does the job. Other than you gotta skip the cutscene. Um, he's got these little uh, little caca demon balls. Uh, also, yeah, he's got a tail, and he will wreck you up. He will just constantly annoy you. This guy is just a bit of a difficulty, like creep out of nowhere. I don't think any of the game is as hard as this guy. And he'll keep making more of these Cacodemon balls, so really your efforts should be spent hitting him in the face. Uh, sort of ignore... Whoops. I got no more. Oh. I got no more teeth thing, so I'm just gonna get that back. Oh. You are absolutely gonna have a hard time if you didn't pick up the uh, extra weapon, by the way, because that was off to the side. Um, it's not too bad, though. Once you picked up, like, if you picked up a bunch of Dark Souls, and you got, like, two of them, uh, two of the bars, and you got your little secondary weapon, he's not too bad. Um, fortunately, because the game is not that punishing, yeah, if you die, you're just up the top. Just, you know, pick up the stuff. And, I, and there were no Dark Souls outside this level, so you don't even have to let enemies respawn. Uh, but yeah, all the original versions of the game would just kind of drop down into this pit immediately. There would be no boss chamber on the way. Um, so I guess the climax is a little bit less there, but it is very interesting that that boss is just completely in this version. This we have now acquired uh, this... Which, uh, this... The baton, or baton, if you will. Uh, this, by the way, is the room where you can offer the caddos uh, for extra life. In fact, I think Shadow Man makes note that this is the case. 100 caddo given in offering to the lower shall greatly increase the strength of a man's spirit. Well, there you go. So, if you got 100, you can do it. Um, interestingly, I think it's not this one, it's the fourth one. Interestingly, the fourth one, for some reason, oh, yeah. has one of the secrets of the game? So you got that as a note. If you go into secrets, you'll see your list of all the things you've unlocked. And in particular, we can play as Duppy, where we are casually just a different skin. A lot of the secrets are a lot harder than to find than that one. Although none of them are particularly that 
that challenging to find. Uh, now, what you need to do is, with your, uh, you know, new baton, use it next to this, and it'll warp you somewhere. Usually that somewhere has another baton thing that will warp you back. Um, but, yeah, the game really doesn't tell you that. You, you need to look in the book and then go, oh yeah, the, um, you know, the baton. The blade that pierces the ether and carries the spirit through it. You need to, you need to, like... You know, uh, read between the lines and go, oh yeah, it's a warp. And also, they've got a little pedestal there, so you should probably note that one. Um, what did we pick up? We picked up the Asson as well, the Sacred Rattle of the Mambo. The Asson doesn't have any special abilities, it is just a weapon. Uh, this thing is indeed a weapon. Uh, so if you are locked onto an enemy, like that one, well, he's not, Shadow Man is not doing a good job. So, whoops, and I fell off. He fell off. Uh, there is nothing left in this level, fortunately, so... Uh, we can talk to- let's talk to Nettie and Johnny again, just for a catch-up of, uh, what, uh, what they believe the plot to be now. My shadow powers increase, Nettie. As they do, I feel as if a great darkness is threatening to swallow me up. You ain't felt nothing yet, Shadowman. That is a double negative, which means he has felt something. It's your fate to go inside the rotten heart of dead side, and then pass beyond it to defy. So the five serial killers Deacon mentioned in his report are from Dead Side? Mm -mm. The five are mortal men under the influence of a greater evil. A greater they are the evil. heralds for the apocalypse, opening the way for the armies of the damned. The power of the dark souls unleashed upon the earth. So I guess it's next stop asylum. Damn right. Get yourself in there and find out how to stop the five from opening the way. And keep taking them dark souls. Yeah, there's a lot of lines of dialogue basically telling you, like... Th there's actually one for, I have seen a dark soul and I don't know how to open it. Like, you literally go up to it and shoot it. Um, I'm very certain that, yeah, for every line that Nettie has, there's another line that Johnny has. Which fortunately, uh, thank you Remaster, original versions spawned you back where the actual start was. Where you have to go past like five enemies. Doing, Michael? I've been putting two and two together. Ah, so you're a mathematical genius now. And what this all adds up to is... A whole heap of stinking cow show you. Will you please let me finish? Sorry, you were saying? The Black Tower plowing its way through Deadside is called the Asylum. Wow. Something, I'm not sure exactly what, has somehow projected five of these Dark Souls across the Vale to Lifeside. These dark souls now empower the twisted minds of five serial killers. It seems that these five are the heralds of Apocalypse, preparing the way for that immortal dark soul army Nettie spoke of. But I guess from software defenders all who will play anything, is, even Armored Core, even though they're not you. into it. I also know that you need to find a way into the That's asylum. a bit. Th that's a bit too much shade. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe able to find out how this terrible something projected the five across the veil. And if you can do that small thing, then you may be able to put a stop to his decidedly dastardly plan. Oh, is that all? Well, when you thought being a super powerful undead voodoo god and lord at that side was going to be easy. I didn't really have any choice in the matter, if you recall. Whatever. If you're looking for a way into the asylum, you might try exploring the paths of shadow. The filthy place is torn up so much at dead side, it's bound to have an outlet somewhere. You know, that sounds like surprisingly good advice. Always glad to be of service to a voodoo demigod. No, piss away. The Paths of Shadow. Oh, and Michael. What is it? When you do finally get into the asylum, make sure you tell Jeffrey Dahmer I said, how are you? For reference, the Paths of Shadow is literally the level you're in. Well, the, the other part of the level. The same level. Um, but it's like, yeah, he's literally just long cuts in just to tell you, yeah, just, just, Keep looking. Keep keep looking. You've got the map as well. Got it. And that's not even like that's not even a special oh, you know. Maybe the original version of the game didn't tell you that. No, like the original version of the game had a, a the map in the manual. So uh, now that we got two of the uh I guess a shadow level of two, we'll just say that. You can now enter this area. Where you are now prompted by a gate with three. Two gates with three, actually. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the game. The fact that we now have, like, the little, you know, the thing we can, uh, for some reason it's unequipped. Probably because I went to the live side. Um, you can warp here. 
immediately... Oh, they fixed it. Because <laughs> uh, this platform wasn't here. This just was on the lava. <laughs> you just immediately die. Uh, this is later in the area. Um, I'm so glad that <laughs> they made it so you don't immediately die when you warp forward in the level like that. So, very nice. Good on your level designers. You did a good. <laughs> Uh, let's take this wonderful bridge into yet another level. And into asylum, like a great black engine. These guys holding the world like it's, you know, deus ex over here. already benighted landscape with its savage, malevolent presence. And within the legions of the truly damned. Ah, legion. Insanity, sheer and stark, and once in human form. Now gutted and torn by eons of glutted indulgence. Their bloodlust flecking the oily walls, living in the shrieks of victims ensnared, hanged, drawn, and quartered by the serpent's squalid writhings. I don't this know what quartering actually I does. I know it's of. like, you and know. The dream is now the place I partly live through. I know it's like, you know, some form of mutilation, but I don't know what it is. Uh, this, uh... <laughs> I'm pretty sure this game's got dismemberment, so I'm not getting YouTube ad money anyways. You put it in limited mode and then YouTube still runs the same ads, but instead you don't make money off it. Classic YouTube. Um... But yeah, we're already in the Asylum level. Uh, the Asylum level has... Uh, and yeah, you can talk to Nettie again for more stuff. Uh, we don't actually... Yeah, there's only one Dark Soul that we can get right now. And there's only five in the level. Uh, but again, like all good levels, they'll have an item that you can use in order to get to more levels. More places. More ha 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 ha. Uh, you'll see this little slot here. This is our prime... Ooh, ah, but what can you do with it? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Like that climber with one hand. Uh, but yeah, as we approach the asylum, I guess I'll, uh, I'll talk about my topic of the day, uh, our topic of the week, which is cancelled games and, uh, in-progress games and all this kind of stuff. Um, we're in this weird day and age where, uh, games are sort of coming out in, that is a wonderful ramp that just does oh but there is indeed a you know, pathway over here oh and it's closed of course <laughs> guess the level just wants me to walk forward don't they uh we live in a day and age where games are not really mysteries to people we sort of know what games are coming out what games are not coming out and uh, if a game isn't announced yet it's probably you know sort of been leaked and hinted at enough times i love the lighting by the way like hold on let me just like stand back here i love how like when these doors close, it's like there's that hard shadow that cuts across. There's still, you know, ambient light, but... Here we are. Uh, this is the Asylum, just right here. You know, wasn't that hard. Uh, the Asylum is not the be-all end-all of all the levels in the game. They build it up as this large thing, but uh, rather it's like... Maybe like four or five of the levels are based inside the Asylum. Um, but it does give you some, uh, central cohesion to the world. It's nice having a landmark there, you know, like, um, what's another game that has, like, Half-Life 2? Isn't that weird? This game is, like, five years earlier than Half-Life 2, and it's done the whole central structure on the, in the world kind of, you know, thing. Uh, these, you don't get spotted. It's just f fun lighting. I love these, uh, faces on the wall, though. Um... We'll probably be able to get over there and get that Dark Soul, but uh, for the time being, I don't think there's a single thing that you can do out here other than realize that, yes, Strafe Running is back. If you you can do the classic thing where you hold, you press A before you land and you'll immediately jump. The Elden Ring thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Elden Ring does the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure one of the other Dark Souls also does that. Um, I want to say maybe Dark Souls. I've never played it, though, so... Um, that's probably another example of a game that's got something like that. It's got the central landmark that you'll keep seeing no matter where you go. Borderlands 2. For all, all of its quirks, Borderlands 2. Uh, the warp is right here, so... There you go. Uh, this is kind of weird because the door is shut, but, uh... 
I was just supposed to notice that, yes, there is indeed a little part where you can go down here, uh, where you'll promptly be uh, shown that, yes, you don't quite have the right abilities to go both directions. Uh, you'll see it right here. Look at that. That pillar's on fire. You can't do anything about that. If I was to grab onto that, it's hot. You can't, you can't do it. Also, I saw I got a follow from Hitman Legend. Thank you, Mr. Hitman Legend, for the follow. Appreciate it. Big appreciation. I don't have the notifications making noise for me. I really should. I, sh I should set up, like, sounds. Uh, but yeah, we live in a day and age where games uh, aren't really mysteries. Um, and it's very hard for games to hide secrets and things like that. Um, not saying it's impossible. Games like Payday and Payday 2 managed to pull it off in a fairly decent way. Um, but there's a lot of games nowadays where it's like people will just reverse engineer the game or, you know, unpack bundlers and things like that to spot the assets and then they go, Ah, oh, look, there's all this stuff up there. Um, so, uh, yeah. But, uh, I'm, I'm gonna pull a save here, by the way, because this jump is really annoying. There's a cat though just there and you're just gonna, like, Oh, first try. First try. Yeah, it's, it's a bit awkward. Because um, you keep kind of rolling off as well. Well, I could actually roll off. Hold on. I got a cat dog. So I'll just walk back up. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> the, the greatest voice line in the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, this comes in the, um, in the wake of, uh, there was a, I mean... What is it? Microsoft is, uh, having, like, court filings for something. I'm not sure if it's the, the Call of Duty thing or whatever, but in some way or another, they released a document which was a roadmap from 2020 about uh, Bethesda's release schedule. And, uh, it, it's... The first thing to note is it's from 2020, and very likely it's from before the pandemic. Uh, they did list Doom Eternal as coming out that year, and, uh... I think they said Deathloop for 2021. I know, right? Deathloop's only like two years old. Um, but uh, they also said Starfield 2021, and we all know Starfield didn't happen in 2021. Um, I was thinking, ooh, was it financial year 2020? Which means it's actually from July 2019 to uh, June 2020. Uh, but no, I think it is calendar year. I think it is indeed the calendar year on that chart. Um, it does list all the way until 2024. I've been seeing people say, oh, look at that, it, you know, Oblivion Remaster confirmed, because there are, there is an Oblivion Remaster on this list. There's also an untitled uh, Indiana Jones game. They just say untitled Indiana Jones game. I think they say Fallout 3 Remaster as well, but that's later down the line. Um, but uh, my biggest, like, you know, thing with this is, one, it's an internal company, like, release timeline. I think, you know, hey, if I'm making a project, I'd sort of want, you know, to know. Is this actually, like, gonna happen, or is this just, like, people meandering around? Set a time limit, see what the devs can pull off in, you know, in some amount of time. Watch for deliverables, watch for, like, hey, you know, at this point in time, let's see what the progress of the game is, and know whether it needs to be cancelled or postponed, or whether it's on track. Things like that. Um... I think when a game is, like, two years out, there's still a lot that can happen. There's a lot of things... I love these dark corridors, by the way. Um, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, chopping noises all over the place. Can we see what's causing the chopping noises? Not really. Nah. Uh, but this is actually how you get into the asylum. There's a bit of flesh here. I hope you don't mind. Nom nom nom. There's a reason why I wanted to play this game in Halloween. Look at these little butcher guys with, um, what can I only describe as gimp masks? These guys are not very fun if you, uh, you know, they're doing that and you let them get up like this. Because it's like, they take like two more hits, so they're probably going to get a free hit on you. Um, but like all the enemies, you know, they drop health, so don't feel too bad. You can also destroy the flesh. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, I... I, I definitely saw some people saying, like, oh, look, you know, this is, you know, one of the most, like, groundbreaking leaks in recent memory, because it's like, oh, you know, Bethesda's, like, working on all this stuff. To that, I would say, without any evidence, so this is all, uh, conjecture and opinion, um, 
I believe lots of companies are always working on so many things. Uh, for example, Nintendo, I certainly believe, has always been floating ideas and concepts and prototypes for F-Zero games. And yet, we only just got a new F-Zero title, like, a month ago. And it was, uh, literally just the regular F-Zero, but with the, uh, Battle Royale 99 approach. As other, you know, Tetris 99, Mario 35, uh, Pac-Man 99 was another one. Um, I highly believe that Nintendo and every other company does this. All the time. Um, the difference is that you never know about it until they announce it. Oh my goodness, there's Dark Souls in the, in the, in the asylum, who thought? Oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's five Dark Souls in this level, there's bound to be more in other levels in the asylum. They're holding Caddo's as well, oh my gosh. I love how spacious the music is, by the way, I hope you'll appreciate that one. Uh, but yeah, so I wouldn't get your hopes up. Uh, that Bethesda is working on, which by the way, this was like just before the acquisition. So it's interesting that Microsoft is releasing this information. Um, I don't know the context of why it was released. So it's probably there to serve a point. And honestly, you know, if you're gonna leak, air quotes, a, an internal roadmap, um, probably safe to bet that that roadmap is uh, not exactly spoiling anything that people either don't know or probably isn't true anymore. For example, Starfield being two years out, or sorry, Starfield, Starfield missing its uh, anticipated release date by two years is uh, certainly one where, yeah, like, this is definitely an out of date roadmap. You know, like, I just saw the outside of the world for a moment. Very fun. This is very fun if you die here, and it's like, oh, now I gotta walk through all that. Because remember, you're still outside. Uh, this is the Engineer's Key. This is, I think, the only item in the game that's actually not a weapon. I'm pressing the button now. You can't, you know, you can't attack with it. Also, that guy out there, this is pain in the heart. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, and then I hit the... Come on. There we go. Uh, but you can use the engineer's key on these things. Plug it in, and uh, this one opens the door, which we can use the shortcut. This one opens a door that we can just leave with, but it's nice to be able to leave. Although that one's uh, double-sided, so it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, you can use this uh, door to now actually leave the area. Look at this blood trail. Like, who put this here? I know I wanted the red carpet, the same carpet. Um, so yeah, don't get your hopes up that Bethesda is going to release a thing. I think always rely on what the, you know, developers officially say. I, I never trust leaks to be the exact thing that, you know, we're going to get. That being said, leaks, you know, if the... I'm glad that I just experienced that. I just dropped off. Fortunately, uh, there is indeed one of these right at the front. So we can now open the big front door, which is much more dramatic when you can walk in through the front door. If you, if you came in from the inside and back out, you missed this cutscene. Great fun with the soundtrack. Lovely and atmospheric. I love it. And I love this like skull head going on here. I think there's a lot more personality with uh, some of the structures and the more aesthetic parts of uh, this remaster as well. For example, a game called Shadow Man probably really relies on real-time shadows. It's not ray tracing, it's just actual, like, just shadow mapping. The old-fashioned approach. Don't get me started, I, I, I've got a huge talk about this in a bit as well. Um, but yeah, uh... So, the reason why I sort of mention rely on what the developers say is because, uh, also at around this time, um, there was a game, uh, published by Sega, developed by a creative assembly called Hyenas. Now, I didn't, I didn't know much about the game, other than it looked bland? 
it was, uh, I think people called it an extraction shooter. Basically, imagine, um, well, I guess Rainbow Six Extraction is probably an example, but like Payday, for example. A game where you, you have a bunch of co-op partners, and you go through a level and you, 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 you know, PvE, shoot, shoot AI cops or some kind of defense, and, uh, was property damage slash steel Sega memorabilia was what I got from the trailer. Um, that's probably a quick an actual weapon. Um, you play it as very quirky, rebellious characters who totally don't seem rebellious today, but maybe in futuristic, uh, fictionalized area they are rebellious. Sure. Um, here we are. We're back here at the uh, at the train. I believe. There's nothing else we can really... Yeah, there's nothing else we can really do. There was the, um... The... Oh, I might as well go back for it, because I've got the... Ability to go back for it. Like, if I'm gonna warp, I'm not gonna be able to see it, so... Might as well. Uh, but there was a... There was a, um... A place I could put the key in, uh, way back at the start. So we might as well just check that for the moment. Just so I never have to go back there. Uh, this key, by the way, does not allow us to gain access to anything we hadn't really seen before. Um, there you go, for example. Whoops. Plug that in, and uh, it turns on uh, one of these crushes from before, uh, which was permanently closed. Now it's not closed. Um, so Hyenas, what's this game? Uh, I feel like what it would have been was a game-as-a-service game. It would have been a... Um, just an ongoing game that would have support, uh, supported it with battle passes and all that kind of jazz. Um, nothing particularly like you've never heard of, but definitely like, yeah, you know, it's it's a game and we'll see what the, the company deems to do uh, with that. Um, but the big news is uh, they did a public test at the beginning of last month. This is a really like thin door. Um, they did a public test at the beginning of last month and only a couple of days ago, like I think on the 28th, they just announced they're cancelling it. Now, I'm not like shedding any tears, I, I didn't have any affiliation with this game, and also it's a, it's a video game. Right? Yeah. If it's not if it's not being made, uh, oh well, but it is, like, yeah, people did work on it. It's kind of, you know, I do wish that whatever became of that game, whatever dev work they did, I'd love to know. I'd love to figure out what the game really was, what they had made. Um, you know, I wish companies were a bit more like, you know, hey, like, you know, we made this. And it was totally not like, you know, not great. It wasn't ready for prime time, that kind of stuff. I'd just love to hear like developers talk. What were the things that they experienced and so on? Uh, I worry that it's uh, maybe a bit more dismal and I don't think uh, any company particularly would want to uh, let public what the developers think about the games they're working on. It's like, yeah, my managers just give me like all these bad requests. Like they told us, it's like, oh, we need microtransactions. I'm, I, like I'm developing the sequel, the middle of Shadow of Mordor, and they're like, yeah, we want to, we want players to either grind ridiculous amounts of time to level up their characters. Or just pay real money for it. Complete crazies. These guys are totally organized, which definitely helps me some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have a train here, by the way. Um, just for note, if you're playing the console versions, not the remaster, there's only one lever. Pressing the two here leads us to a completely exclusive level to the remaster. This was not in the original version of the game. Um, I think it's still got its own line of dialogue. Oh, does it not? No. Look at this Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. This <laughs> train carriage going along. You're gonna enjoy it. There's like one audio track, one music um, track for a later stage, and it's just like you're just gonna hear like child like crying and chainsaw noises, and it's like wow. Uh, so this is uh, the experimentation room. So this is a completely unique level, uh, and I believe. You can get three of the Dark Souls, which is a definite nice thing to have. Um, Got it. There's also a big check at the beginning just to make sure that you did indeed grab the key. Uh, this level also is home to a, a new boss, which, for reference, wasn't even in the original versions of the re-release. This is in that 1.5 patch that came out in December, less than a year ago. So. 
Every time, I don't know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I play old games, but I'm in this weird, like, kind of... I'm like Shadow Man, I'm in Limbo. I'm playing old games that have new features added to them within the past year. Oh my goodness. I always love this. I, I, I love that about, like, really any game. It's just, like, games that exist at a certain point in time and games that, like, you know, there's more content, cut content, whatever, like, things bringing it to life. I'm always loving, like, a bit of both. What was the game at a point in time and what's the game that it can be now? And being able to sort of experience all of that. Um, so, Hyenas, unfortunately, will probably never be ex able to experience any of it. Hyenas is closing as a game. Uh, Creative Assembly is definitely experiencing layoffs. This is lava still. I hope you appreciate that. This is a very dark hallway. I hope this picks up on stream pretty well. <laughs> I don't think this game is too dark that it's impossible to tell what's going on, but, uh... You could do the classic, uh... Oop. You could do the classic, uh, Quake 2, uh, approach. Start shooting things. Making some light. There's actually an item that, uh... Will maybe, maybe I'll get it this stream, we'll see. I might not, it's, it's 1 hour 26. I'll keep going, I've been doing some shorter streams recently. I'm like, yeah. Nice thing about this game is that I can call it wherever I want. Preferably try to call it on a map. This reminds me of, uh, one of those, uh, you remember at the end of the, um, the Rayman 2, uh, Sanctuary of, uh, Rock and Lava? This is, like, the exact same, like, way that ends it out. I'm, like, expecting a spider web there with a, with a cat, oh, it's right there! <laughs> this area is very labyrinthian. It snakes around a, a fair amount, and it's very easy to not really know where you're going. Um, it's one completely optional. Like if we go back to the uh, to the the map, um, like this is experimentation rooms. I don't actually think you'll even get an item here. Whatever the case, it's not required um, because uh, really, what you should be doing is uh, getting more Dark Souls. That's your actual goal right now. Um, I don't think we actually get any important item from the Asylum at all. I think it's just stocking up your supply of Dark Souls. But, uh, should you come here now, uh, this item right here is actually one of the most handiest items you'll get. Uh, this is the Tet de Mort. Tete de Mort? Uh, it is just a weapon, but it is very handy because it doesn't use that much ammo and does a fair amount of damage. And you'll probably see me rely on it a fair bit. I like this, uh, blood trail, probably, probably to give you a bit of a landmark, something to, to hinge off of. Um, yeah, uh, people did criticize hyenas on the internet, and I don't want to get into the, uh, reasons why hyenas was, uh, um, criticized, we'll say. Um, mostly because I don't know much about hyenas. I don't think it's worth me really opining on it if I really have no idea. Um, but definitely as a product, I'm still sad. I do want all products to sort of be all things really every company makes to be sort of maintained and I know full well that so many games, the source code gets lost. The, it, it'll just happen, they'll delete the source code and suddenly now we have to rebuild Final Fantasy X from the ground up with brand new assets. Instead of just porting the same code. Like the Shadow Man, for example. There was the Dreamcast source code that allowed us to have a very faithful recreation. Although I don't know how cycle accurate this game is. I don't think it really is cycle accurate, because I think there's maybe a bit too much going on. Also, they, they changed enough of the game. I'm, eh, it's fine. Um, but yeah, finding another Dark Soul, very nice. This Cado is uh, such a hint, because it's like, look at this tiny little ledge. This looks like the exact same, like, you know, grating texture as that, but just super smushed. I don't know, do you see what I mean? Like that texture. This music's a bit of a vibe, though. Just kind of builds up into this weird beat. You don't really quite know where it's going. That's sort of the that's sort of the beauty of the soundtrack. Oh, I hate this level. <laughs> oh, okay, we can go the other way. Nope. 
There we go. Yeah, this level snakes around a bunch, and you'll probably just keep coming across dead ends like that. Trust me, though. Persevere, you will find a way through this. Uh, oh my god. This reminds me of uh, that room in Dark Souls 1. Where you go into the painting, you know what I mean? Listen, I get to mention Dark Souls, wow. The Dark Souls are mine. I like these doors as well, very fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh well, Hi rip hyenas, but uh, hopefully, very hopefully, uh, you know, one, uh, job layoffs are never fun, but hopefully this means that people move on to projects with more um, consistent, reliable results. Uh, plug that and uh, you open that door, which we'll need to go into in a bit, because I think this leads to a dead end. Sweet Jesus. It does, yes. Shadow Man is surprised that the experimentation rubes does uh rooms, not rubes. The experimentation rubes does indeed have experimentation. I love I love the water texture just glowing in there. Also, is this little feed eye? Little fetus? Little cute little fetus looking chilling in there. The end boss from Half-Life. And he, this that is Oh okay, I was like that's a little Oh, he's like coming out. He's, he's like, he's going. He's, he's coming out there. Okay. There's something about candles. Candles are always like creepy now. You'll never like just, just use like a little tiny LED these days. You don't need candles. I need a bit of a bit of a exit mold going on here though. Yeah. Uh, this is a tremendous jump, but trust me, you can do it. <laughs> uh, this is also back where we started, so that's okay. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this activated this door over here. Which you didn't exactly need, I think you could have jumped around here anyways. Whoops. Whoops. Come on, climb along. Uh, we got a, a fan here. This fan will blow you in, as you can see. There you go, that good old side jump. Never lets me down. So to the end, here we go. We've got a little, little buzzer. And there we go. Suddenly I've now activated a crusher all the way at the beginning level. Kind of annoyingly as well, like, you go, oh, okay, look, that's a ramp that goes down. I wonder if it's useful. Oh, it leads to the lava again. You're just, you'll keep coming across that. Gonna hook up my smart home LEDs, my satanic rituals on me. Gonna monetize, uh, modernize evil rituals. Exactly, my man. You're thinking, you're thinking along the lines. Yeah, you follow this doorway. What have we got? Another closed door. They really need to, like, this one as well, since it's a level that was cut, I think this is the perfect opportunity to have some quality of life changes. For example, uh, putting like the doors on the outside so you can tell which chambers you can actually go into instead of going all the way down a, a corridor just to find out you can't go through it. They really should fix that, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the room I need to go into. Sort of gotta climb around here. It's a bit interesting, but... I hope you're liking machinery noises all the time, by the way. Oop. Here we go. Are there any caddos? Oh, there's 32 in this level. Well, there's one. This guy with a gun, though. He fires the slowest bullets. Yeah, uh, there was one other game I wanted to mention. What was it? Uh, oh, come to me. Came to me in a dream. I'll mention it again. Uh, it was on the topic of, um... Of, uh, cancelled games or some other kind of thing. Um, I'll get to it eventually. Uh, but I did note, uh, in my mind, uh, isn't it weird that, like, there's so many games 
that, like, I'm now, like, I, I feel like I play video games as a hobby. I, you know, I don't read, you know, gaming publications, but I'm at least aware of the storefronts and generally where the companies are, like, putting out. I didn't even know, um, the new, like, The Crew came out two weeks ago. Like, I never played the, I think I played The Crew 2 and I just hated it and then I bought it because I'm sadistic like that. Um, on sale, of course. You know, I gotta be a cheapskate somehow. Um, I have a hunch that there's a, like, a secret on top of a bar, or a beam. But I feel like it's not this level. I think it's a very different level. Um, I guess we go to that porta door, wherever that was. A little vent. I'm venting. Such a long trek to get to that, uh, that, um, warp point, by the way, but well worth it. And you get to plug this in, which, uh, opens the door way back out at the beginning. Or, not the beginning. Oh well. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't even realize the Crew 2 came out, and I realize it's because it's not on Steam. I'm moderately aware of Steam's new releases. When it's on Epic, I don't know, I'm not looking at I'm not checking that all the time. So, uh, yeah, they just casually release it. Um, I don't know if people are liking it or loving it, um, but I feel like that's a big problem that games sort of need to, or companies need to really, like, kind of get their head around. It's like, hey, yeah, like, can you advertise your games in a way that I know that they exist? For example, uh, there's a new Assassin's Creed, and I'm, a, and I'm a little more aware of that, but that's coming out on Thursday or Friday? I'm a little more aware of that, but I don't quite, like, I still haven't, like, fully paid attention to that happening. It's just sort of crept upon me. I'm like, oh, okay. Spent all this time opening all these doors. So, a lot of these levels, and you'll sort of notice this, will just have, like, side cuts. Little side rooms. Just things all over the place. Uh, especially this level. Actually, no. No, I think there'll be a bunch of levels. Uh, in particular, you can, uh, spot behind this guy. But there's a little cat on Little big guy, he's just chilling. He's got some bits in his shoulders though, he's probably gonna need to get that little tat. Looks a bit painful. I'm not too sure what's with the uh, the cross iconography to indicate an open door, like... You know what I mean? Maybe it's like a translator was like, okay, well open door means salvation. In some, some way. I actually, I would really love to know like what the... Um, designers of the game. First of all, who the designers of the game are, first of all. Um, oh, I love those windows. Just how musty they are on the outside. This aesthetic, man, it's like, I would never want to live here, ever, but it's Nettie super fun. Only a shadow man or something more powerful could release a dark soul from a govi. This is bad. Real bad. Also, yes, this, uh, this little bit of a uh, plot was not in the original versions of the game, so, uh, you'd never know that they could actually open the Dark Souls themselves. Open the Gobies. Eternally snaking corridors. Just, just remember, that was your nice little window back into the, uh, into the main chamber. Use that main chamber as a, as a bit of a, uh, navigation point, because, uh, again, all these levels, they snake around in lots of ways. Playing around the doors is very annoying, though, in this game, because the doors close when you... you know, they open and close when you need to, but... You want to shoot a guy who's on the other side, and he's just waiting there. I might not be able to show off a use case of that now, but remind me next week. I can definitely show off, like, one of the most egregious doors I've ever seen in a game. Um... I'm not too sure what these guys even are, but they, you know, like, at least the, the Souls guys. Also, uh, this corridor might look familiar. This was, uh, the earlier one, which we'll, we'll back up into eventually. Still got more doors to check out. For example, this one's just got a Dark Soul chilling there. It's not even in a Gobi, it's just there, which is very interesting. These are the armies of the damned, the accursed vessels for the Dark Souls. 
I must find a way to stop them from traveling across the veil to the world of the living. So I think that's the plot, is the serial killers are trying to obtain, well, in particular, uh, Legion is trying to obtain ultimate power by collecting these Dark Souls and uh, leading an army against the world of the living, I think. And he's leveraging the serial killers to effectively, uh, you know, do some uh, large ritual slaughter, I think, is the main driving force. I like how this is that little fish tank we saw earlier. Just a caddo. Nothing, nothing too fancy, but not nothing. Uh, let's just continue on this way. This is a room you have to interact with in order to move it up. <laughs> oh, you may be wondering what the D-pad does. It moves the camera a little bit. So you can zoom in or zoom out. That's it. That's all you get. Oh, we're back here. Okay. Uh, I don't think I particularly need to be here. I, I think I prefer to be further down there. What a bit of a funky room, though. <laughs> Again, nice and moody. We got the fan. We've My favorite thing, fans. We don't have hard shadows. I love fans. Every game with fans, love them. Fans and volcanoes. I'm a sucker for fans and volcanoes. This game doesn't have a volcano, but it does have a lot of lava, so it's close enough. Uh, we opened this door a bit ago, so... Uh, this area, I love. This is my... Yeah, okay, we don't have volcanoes, but we got this. And this is good enough. Look how cool this is! It's like this big spinning thing. I don't have motion blur on. I'm gonna turn on motion blur just for a hot second, just so you can see, like, what, uh, what I'm looking at here. But like, this is the effect. This is like, ooh, ooh, very nice, very fun and blurry. Unfortunately, uh, I think you lose a lot of quality when you stream games and you've got motion blur on. I think the effect is kind of nice, but I've generally been playing with it off. I think the clarity works better for a, a video stream. Uh, and yes, you won't be disappointed. You do indeed write it. <laughs> you do, you are sliding off a little bit, but I, I just love this effect. I'm just like, ooh. <laughs> It's so good. There was one caddo as well, so some some designer was like, "Yeah, we gotta we gotta get the player on that." It's super cool. It's a bit of a climb, though, ain't it? With that fun infernal machine, as it is, as it as it will be, and as it is. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll never remember what I was thinking of, but oh well. Another Caddo. We'll probably get a hundred by the end of the stream, which was very nice. Have a bit more health. And walk past something. Uh, I'm not counting the Caddo off the top of my head, so uh, yeah, if you're missing Caddo, just just go back at the end of the game. Don't don't try and get it in the middle of the game. It's it's too much work. Because you'll never know what items you actually need. It's just a lot easier to like, go back at the end. Uh, okay, so we got this door, this... Oh my gosh. So many doors. How about let's interact with the, with the door. Let's open it up before I get absolutely cremated in this room. Where does this lead us? Uh, this corridor, I guess. If you know, if you know your corridors, that's the one that led right to the lift room, or the elevator room, if you're American. Do we ever have a categorical reason why the Americans call it elevators and not lifts? Like, yeah, I guess it elevates you, but it also lifts you. And elevator is three syllables, so I don't know why. Why is your word so much longer? just means the same thing. <laughs> uh, there's that. I think this just leads back. I don't think... This looks familiar. Ah, it's super familiar because this is a sort of back... 
in the previous chamber. Yeah, you'll, you'll see where I am when I exit. We're back here. There is, I believe, this looks kind of weird, but like there is indeed a secret if you jump close to this. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just here. Just, just, you know, secret. Why not? Uh, I, what was that secret, I believe? You can play as the Beta Shadow Man! Look at that, he's got very blue jeans, like he's like... Beta Crash Bandicoot, basically. He's not as glowy as real Shadow Man, though, so... Uh, I don't think any of the, the cheats, are, or any of the secrets are actually, like, hacky cheats. I think they're all legit, just like extra goodies. Uh, Unbelievable. Some of them are funky. I think there is a big head mode, though. Now, okay, I've been wandering around a bunch. I died, so I'm now somewhere in the middle of the level, trying to figure out where. I think there was. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm getting turned around. Oh, I guess that was the way to go. Yeah, that was the way to go. Yeah, yeah, that was the way to go. Because then you keep going forward here. And then you work your way back into an older room. So that's... This This leads way back. Yeah. <laughs> Getting turned around. Always fun. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't lead back. It leads sort of forward. Oh, well. Find my way home. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're into the spooky season, we're into October, uh, so we're scarily in the last- yeah, the, the spookiest thing about October is realizing that there's three months left of the year. 2023 is in its final quarter, in its final stretch, so uh, I hope you all have been achieving what you've needed to achieve in 2023. Um, oh my gosh, that Cado! Someone who probably knows this game inside out, the remaster inside out as well. The ultra dedicated person is like looking at that going, oh no, he didn't pick up that cat. Uh, this guy no doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't even know the game. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you're achieving the things that you wanted to achieve. Uh, I think we need to work our way back to this area because secretly uh, there's a locked door here. But if you go up here, you bounce your way up here. Literally a platformer. <laughs> Platforms here. You see, there's an open door just there. I think that's always been open. Um, and I think ultimately that's the only place you actually needed to go to and needed in air quotes as well uh, in this level. I can tell I haven't been here because it's enemies, so. I like this bit with this little tiny box thing. But you can just jump up to the ceiling and grab yourself a cado, you know. But wait, there's more! Hope you like concussion. Oh, that doesn't go anywhere. Because it actually secretly drops down here. Which, uh... Well, this looks into... I believe this looks into two... Chambers from before. But, uh, this, this door that we're opening up here is just literally back here. So I think I actually might have missed a bit just up there. I'm just going to check that. Um, but yeah, uh, did I beat really any games this week? Not really, nah. It was the Quake 2 thing, but I've generally been a bit hands-off. I've had stuff, uh, IRL stuff and, and, and work stuff just taking up my time this week. Um, wait a minute. I guess we always went here. Right? Yeah, I must have walked in here. And we open up this door, so I know I've got like this little secret route that leads back to... Did I really just miss the door and miss the, the part that goes up? I guess I did. I'm... I'm... I'm getting myself so turned around. This is probably... The second most labyrinthian level of them all, uh, and uh, that's that's not very uh, 
not very comforting. Fortunately, once you're here, I know this area is just like a straightforward romp. Uh, Shadow Man has no air bar, by the way. Shadow Man in the real world, in live side, has an air bar. Michael Leroy. But uh, Shadow Man doesn't. So swim to your heart's content and realize that you are coming across uh, blocked passageways constantly. Uh, I think if I swim back, there's probably another... So another thing? I'm pretty sure there was something. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You know why? Because I activated the switch, but I need to activate activate the valve. Secretly a valve game. Oh! Oh my gosh, I remembered the thing! <laughs> Counter-Strike 2! Wow! Uh, Counter-Strike 2 just came out of, uh, whatever, beta? I don't know. I think it was a closed test. I don't think it was publicly available to me, at least, but, uh, Counter-Strike 2 is officially out. Uh, Counter-Strike 2... Mmm, I think I spoke about Overwatch 2 earlier this year, and Counter-Strike 2, in my eyes, is the exact same thing, but it came from a little bit of a softer ground. So, I'm not as upset, but it is the same problem. Uh, first of all, the biggest one, obviously, it's a 2, but what's the sequel? What is new about this? Well, it's definitely on a new engine, similar to Overwatch 2, where they've done enough engines under the hood. Isn't Counter-Strike 2 mostly about the engine? Yes, yeah, pretty much it is. Um, so, the big things that you get about uh, the new engine is, uh, most importantly, uh, they can... Um, the sound is actually good. The sound is really, really good. I've noticed that, um, without thinking, I'm able to detect enemies a lot better than I used to be. I feel like there's a lot more clarity in where all the sounds are coming from. Uh, none of it really gets caught out uh, by, like, clipping or anything. I'm enjoying that. The smoke is cool looking. Uh, I think there's a stylistic difference whether you like how the flares are working. Um, or, not the flares, but like how, um, how bullets, uh, penetrate the smoke. I've found that the bullets, like, uh, the line, uh, what's the, what's the name of that? The, the way that bullets, like, you know, create like a, like a flash and a line where the bullets been going. The trace, I guess? The traces are super obvious. You're actually able to sort of tell where enemies are shooting from a lot easier than you used to. Um, even without the smoke, because bullets will push through the smoke, and while they won't necessarily create a hole, well, maybe they, maybe they can if you're using the right kinds of guns, will create kind of holes that you might be able to see through, but you can definitely tell that the bullets are coming through the smoke. You can't just pop down the smoke and then forever be just hiding behind it. It's like, well, if you're shooting bullets, people are definitely gonna tell that you're shooting bullets from that direction. Uh, for reference, this room is like a 3x3 three three full of like these little chambers. Uh, one of the chambers is got no water, so you couldn't swim through it, but uh, that's where we need to go. And you gotta watch out for all these enemies. Let's actually get a weapon. I haven't been using this for a bit. I've been holding onto the key. Uh, I think that's mostly it. I think you'll definitely notice some visual fidelity improvements. Um, I think the lighting is a lot better. I've noticed characters' shadows. Like, I've actually been able to spot people's shadows and know that they're around corners and actually get them. And I'm a little worried that sometimes they'll get me uh, when they're doing that. Yeah, you gotta drop down here, but I'm just gonna back up and grab things that are on the higher ledge for a moment. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, you can spot the enemies so much better, I feel. So, that's good. That's nice positives. Uh, there are some design differences that you might feel here and there for. Uh, in particular, um, I maybe this has been a while. Maybe this has been a counter strike go for a while. Um, but the uh, the rounds, competitive rounds, are now uh, 12 rounds each per half uh, instead of the 15. This means that matches will end a fair bit quicker because now you're just playing to 12, I think. 12 is your, your target you're going for. Um, also, I don't think there's a tie. I think it does cut the final round a little shorter, just so you don't end in a tie. I think that's welcome. Um, I don't mind the shortened rounds, because you sort of hit, like, you know, like, y y y you know who's going to win or lose decently early, so let's not spend too much time in a half. 
as well. Um, it usually, yeah, no, sometimes it swings when you change sides. But yeah, it's like, yeah, if you're getting wrecked this, you know, on one half, you're gonna feel like you're getting wrecked the whole game, so ending it a bit quicker is nice. I don't think any of the weapons have changed prices or even really, like, have changed a ton. Some people might say the spray patterns are different. I'm not sure. Like, I, I just don't know what I'm expecting. Um, but I, I can definitely tell the prices for the weapons, the ammo counts, basically the same. Uh, one fundamental difference is that now all of the weapons, or sorry, all of the, the, you now only have three categories of weapons, pistols, rifles, and what is considered heavy, which for some odd reason now includes the traditional heavy weapons and the submachine guns. Submachine guns are now heavy for some reason. Um, you are only able to select five of each weapon, although for pistols only four because the starter pistol you know, that occupies one of them. Um, here we go, open this up. Let me just double check to my right a little bit just to make sure I didn't miss something. I know there's an enemy there. They didn't hide a caddo next to this little tree. We're not even really outside, like there's still scaffolding and structure over here. Little coffin door. Look at that, you could just, just you know. Stab a thing, warp your way, sort it out. Sort it out. This leads to uh, the warp point, which is very nice and convenient, but that's there. So if you ever, well, die, I guess. Look at that, you don't have too far to go. Walk your way up here and look at these things. I believe this happened already good. in the remaster. What happened afterwards, though, in this next room? This boss wasn't there until December. This is a brand new boss, like crazy brand new. You gotta be goddamn kidding. Jesus. <laughs> this, uh, I don't even know. I don't, I don't have a name for this boss. Actually, maybe I do. This is, uh, no, I don't have a name for the boss. Look, there's brand new music as well. Woo! Uh, but yeah, this, uh, this, uh, what I can only describe as, uh, a sorceress, I think is probably the term. Means serious business. She keeps stabbing herself and casting lightning all over the place. Man, it's gonna feel weird when it's like, isn't this like a 1999 game and there's dubstep? Yeah, I know. <laughs> the voice acting is top top shelf. It's at that it's at that point where it's like it gets the job done and there's weirdly excessive swearing, which I I don't know. For 1999, it's like, oh, that's the fun kind of edgy. This whole game is fun edgy. I like it. Have you noticed that the cathedral is constantly visible in the back there? Just thought I'd like to add that. There's this little centaur. You can lock on, but this guy keeps disappearing. Or girl, I guess. That was a female voice. Uh, but yeah, so... The thing with five... Heavy weapons, now being your SMGs, is that, uh... New players need to be actually a bit cautious about what weapons they think are actually like easy to use when they start playing the game. Because both the Negev and the M249 are not in there. And the Negev, you know, despite what people say, is oh, look at that, nice and easy. Great. Oh yeah. Uh the Negev is very easy to use if uh you're a noob. Because instead of being able to aim at people's heads, you could just pelt them with like seven bullets. The thing is accurate enough that you could you could wing it, but it's not equipped by default. And you're gonna find that you actually are missing lots of weapons that you probably may have been used to in Counter-Strike because they're just not equipped. They're there, you just gotta equip them. That's one thing I don't like. Um, it does mean that yeah, everyone will have different weapons like coming in. Uh, for reference as well, this is 
one of five retractors in the game. The retractors are the actual goal of the game? The keys that you need. Ultimately, in order to beat the game, you'll need to uh, defeat all five of the serial killers. Each serial killer is guarded, well, maybe not guarded, but uh, their realm, their world is uh, locked off and you need one retractor to visit them. So uh, I take back this area being optional. It's inevitably needed. But uh, yeah, you don't need any of the retractor keys until you basically want to start finishing the game. None of those areas particularly have a ton of Dark Souls that you'll go to. And it's not like any of them have items. In fact, like you can see on the map. You see how the, sh the schism chambers... Is it schism or schism? I think it's schism. Uh, has... Well, I guess five icons out of it. Uh, that leads to, as you can see on the right, five places in live side. There's items in there, but... Uh, yeah, no, they're just prisms. They're just things that you'll you'll need in order to beat the game. This guy's really mean serious. Uh, really mean serious business. So, uh, anything else about Counter Strike 2 mechanically? Not really. It still sort of feels mostly the same game. Um, I haven't played too many competitive games. I think I've basically played two, and I played a wingman. I lost both competitive games because I suck at Counter-Strike nowadays and uh, like I don't know man a lot the average person in, who plays Counter-Strike still has played way more Counter-Strike than I have now I'm I'm constantly falling behind and that's a struggle that every multiplayer game has it's not exclusively a Counter-Strike thing but it's definitely a problem when newer game or when a game is old and I just am more inexperienced it's gonna happen as long as the game has decent matchmaking and you'll eventually find players who are your skill level. But uh, I seem to be around people who know how to aim but don't know how to like stand or react. They had really slow reaction times but then they could aim very well at people's heads. So it's, I don't know, it's a bit complex. It's, it's, like I, I know where to be. I know sort of like what weapons I need to be rocking. I don't exactly know how to win a gunfight though. And, uh, at the end of the day, that's sort of what means everything in Counter-Strike. <laughs> Doesn't really matter how good you are. It just matters how well you can, you know, take someone out. I'm sort of looking down a lot, I realize. <laughs> uh, do 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 Weapons. Items. I like this weapon wheel. It's a lot more convenient to keep swapping weapons via the wheel rather than the poor screen, which you would always have to do. This has led back up to the top. Uh, there is no... yeah, there's no... nothing else, basically. We got the retractor, we're good. Uh, there's still one more Dark Soul on this level, but uh, we've experienced most of the level by now, so that's good. Uh, let's keep going, just for a bit, just to gain some insight to uh, the remainder of uh, the Asylum. Because we still got a little bit more just to check out. Um, but yeah, the the biggest thing about Counter-Strike 2... Oh, we're probably going to get a little bit of exposition, so I won't start my biggest thing at Counter-Strike 2. Let's go to Chamber 3. Yeah, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say something about uh, the horror the horror. Across the millennia, they have built a cathedral to pain and worship at its altars of blood. It's a lot shorter than I expected. Um... <laughs> It is, it is a cathedral, though. Uh, so this is... Uh, in fact, actually, this is indeed the Cathedral of Pain. Wow. Uh, there is only one Dark Soul in this area. Uh, but this is the important part of the world that you'll probably need to uh, uncover and experience. Oh, come on. There we go. They must be pigs. They squeal like pigs. The war point is, this isn't a very large level, so don't worry about that. I like this, uh... Well, I thought it was a glass window reflection, like from up there. I think that's what they were going for, but unfortunately I can stand in front of it, so... Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, my biggest problem with Counter-Strike 2 is... What Counter-Strike 2 has done to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. 
I completely get that mm, people probably don't want to play both. But my problem is, the things in Counter-Strike 2 aren't necessarily a superset of all the features of Counter-Strike 1. Uh, for reference, there were five doors in that room. Each one leads to, uh... Well, some sort of chamber. You'll, you'll get, um, these, like, interesting musical snippets of what the music in this... Well, this is one of the serial killers, by the way. Um, into their level, basically. It's not quite the music of their level. One of them's got, like, this kind of, like, funky disco music. And it's incredibly distorted. This is, like, wild pitch bend. I'll, I'll, I'll show it off in a couple of minutes. Um... But, uh, yeah, you can choose, you can use your retractors to choose which person you want to go to, which level of theirs you want to play. I seem to recall Jaunty speaking of corpses and gateways, as though the two were one and the same. But how do I make this bloody vessel work for me? Uh, for reference, we technically haven't been told how to do it. Uh, but also the game doesn't exactly... <laughs> the game doesn't exactly... Oh, well, oh, I gotta be a little careful. Oh, nope. I'm technically alive. Not anymore. <laughs> oh well. The, wa the warp isn't that far, it's just literally here. <laughs> we'll take another crack again, that Kato. Um, but yeah, Counter-Strike 2 replaces Counter-Strike Global Offensive. If you own Global Offensive, which was free to play anyways. Um, well, but not always free to play, so maybe you're a little bummed if you paid money for it. Um, but it didn't cost as much as Overwatch, so I don't think I don't think you should be as upset. Also, uh, very nicely at least, uh, if you go to the betas tab, you'll find there's a version. I think it's like 1.38 or something, and it's titled uh, Replay Viewer. But effectively, it is Counter Strike Global Offensive. It uh, actually has both versions, so you can keep swapping between Global Offensive and Counter Strike 2. But do note, the servers to Global Offensive are off. You can't do official matchmaking with Counter-Strike Global Offensive anymore, uh, which is sort of a lot of the game. This is the one. That pitch bend. <laughs> Death. It's like a crazy, like, war effect, and it just goes crazy low. Like, it doesn't even start the song. It's just immediately distorted, immediately warped. Legit, like, I don't know, I felt something with this music. I was like, not particularly this track, but this whole game is like... When you're sitting by yourself and you're not talking over the whole thing, it's like, this really soaks you up into this, like, moody, otherworldly, um... Sort of dismal atmosphere, like, I'm just looking at this, like... I mean, I guess this is a, a soul, this, or, or, or a ghoul, one of these things, so technically, that is not a real person who's uh, thrown and destroyed. Unfortunately, and I think uh, one of the cutscenes will make note of this, is uh, these effectively act as gateway to the real world, and in order to get to the real world, there's a real dead person on the other side. Uh, not a, like an actual figure, but it's the real world, and there was a dead person, so... Uh, for some reason, uh, this guy gets to... He's got... He's got a picture of the cathedral. In the cathedral. And gears. Ooh. That's him. He's got the choir music. That's how you know he's serious. Um, so interestingly, if you play the, uh, the original console version, there would only be three of these rooms. And I think maybe the, um... The, uh, like, which rooms relate to which serial killer is, uh, different. Um, but that's because, yeah, they only had three of the levels. Uh, so, uh, again, if you played the original, but you haven't played the remaster, you might be in for a treat as to what, uh, what we'll find, what we'll see. But, uh, you probably were in for a treat for that whole last level, just crazy labyrinthian level. Oh, they didn't put any caddos chilling up here. How many caddos are in this level? 37. I should probably get more health before the end of the stream as well. Yeah, uh, so, but Counter-Strike 2 
Even though, yes, Global Offensive is done, we are now in Counter-Strike 2 territory. Counter-Strike 2 does not contain all... Oh, yeah, Moonlight Sonata backwards, by the way. I hope you appreciate that. Someone's going to tell me, uh, actually, it's Nocturne, not Moonlight Sonata. Whoops. <laughs> it, it, I think it is Nocturne, actually. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Beethoven, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's Beethoven. I don't know my old music, I'm sorry. I, I listened to Turandot for the first time like a couple of weeks ago and I'm like, oh, is that where the, 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 the Ness and Dorma is from? Oops. Like, I mean, I didn't even know the Ness and Dorma by name, really. Like, I didn't just, I, I didn't put the music and the name together. So now it's like, ah, I now know it's from that. Very nice, but uh... Yeah, uh, but yeah, Counter-Strike 2 only contains 10 maps. Uh, do I know them off the top of my head? Maybe. It's definitely got Dust 2, it's got Mirage, Inferno, um, Nuke, uh, a Ancient? Not Aztec, it's like one of the newer maps they had, Ancient, Anubis, Office, Italy. I've got two left. I've got two left. Do I know the two? Um... Overpass, and... Nah, nah. It's not coming to me. It is a- it is a classic. But, like, none of these are actually, like, brand new maps. They're definitely overhauled visually a bit for the new engine, and- and they definitely look nice, but... Um... They're not new maps. There's no, there's no new maps. Uh, also on top of that, you can't play Italy in competitive for some reason. My favorite. <laughs> it just needs fortunate son playing. Because this is just Vietnam flashbacks to the room. I've never... I've been to some cathedrals in my day, but I've never known like them to have like side chambers. Uh, sometimes with a staircase leading up to a dead person and lava. The last two things, usually not, but even then, it's like there's seats in front of this. Uh, and perhaps that's a, like, a silent fun beauty of this game is the bizarre. Oh, they did it! They did it! They did the fan shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fan shadow. Sorry, sorry, had to interrupt, but got, gotta note that. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, oh, there's something like fun and abstract about how this whole art style works. Other than hearing, uh, I'm pretty sure these are royalty free screams. Someone tell me, are they royalty free? Is there any way to actually find out like what royalty or what like source material various bits that make up just even audio or music are from? Because like when a game uses so many of them, it's like, oh, it's very hard to know where they're from. Uh, these are just five rooms, you can use your, your thing to open up one of them, but you won't be able to do anything until Shadow Man becomes able to access the real world. Which is not now, so if you try now, you're going to be deeply disappointed. I think one of the levels also catches you in a bit of a, a like, a softlock scenario, because it involves, well, maybe not a softlock scenario, but Shadow Man can't breathe infinitely underwater. And one of the levels requires you to swim for a very long time underwater, so... But only one of them. It's very interesting, but yeah, there's no point going into any of those levels because you're going to return to them later with all the enemies respawned. And, uh... Like, you might as well just go when you can the first time. Here's your one Dark Soul for the level. are mine. They are yours. He has been collecting them. Uh... There's still, like, I don't think we've been able to clear off everything in a level yet. There's still so many, like, abilities and things that we haven't really gotten to yet. Um, should I do one more level? Maybe I should. There are going to be five, five weeks of October. Mm. Nah, I think this is a good, a good point, because I am going to... You know, navigate to a completely new level, and I feel like that might take a while, so 
Uh, but there is one last door over here, and I'll, I'll grab some more health uh, just to finish up about the Counter-Strike 2 stuff. Um, Counter-Strike 2 also doesn't have um, the deathmatch maps that you may know and love, such as Shoots, St. Mark, uh, Baggage? It doesn't have the gun game mode. The deathmatch mode is uh, not team deathmatch, it's just kill everyone deathmatch, which is fine, I'm not too upset about that. Uh, by the way, heed note, they literally spell it out. Dark Soul, Dead Side Asylum, look at that. Retractor Key, Retractor Key? Oh boy. Pop that in there, internal organs remove, and then you can go to the live side world. Just, just really spelling it out there. The, the game, if you didn't, if you didn't know what the retractor is for, which, to be honest, like, without anyone telling you, it's sort of a bit hard to guess that that's the case. But sure, I don't know what a. Uh, I guess that's the snake with the top hat. There must be something to these uh, pictures on the wall, just as like a fun World War reason why that's there. Sure. Uh. But yeah, other than that, we kind of just came here just for uh, opening the schisms. The main reason of why we need to continue is because we need to continue to enter the Temple of Fire. Mmm. Let's do it. Let's actually do it. Let's do it. Come on, Slowpoke. Slowpoke. <laughs> Come on, Slowpoke. I'm not. <laughs> Look at that. I I I know. I feel like I've done too many short streams, and then it's like, mmm. Is now a good point to end it? Nah. Let's just continue. Continue. Commit. Listen, we had daylight saving, so I, I appreciate everyone for chilling in on the stream. Because um, I've been streaming an hour earlier than usual, because that's just when daylight savings kicks in. The clocks went forward an hour. Um, I basically picked up all the caddos, so I don't need to re-pick them up. But go over to it. These gifts I give to thee, O oh gracious lower, O oh generous lower, a spiritual trade for life beyond. My life force increases. There you go. So, hey, yeah, yeah, you get a you get a little bit more life, which will indeed help. Uh, let's just talk to Nettie. Why not? Let's see what they're, they're chilling. I know I've missed a bajillion lines of dialogue that they've had as well, but eh. I followed the Dark Souls trail into the asylum, but where the hell are the five? They're in this world, Shadow Man. Five mortal men touched by the power of the Dark Souls. Oh, her neck. Ooh. Unlike you, they don't have the mask of shadows controlling and channeling the dark power. It twists their minds, fills their already tainted hearts with even greater perversions, and a hatred so terrible it has sent them insane. Okay, so they're in this world, but where exactly? That's your job, Shadow Man. You gotta go back to the asylum and find a way through. The same way the Dark Souls found their way into the Five. Hunt the mothers down, Shadow Man, and kick their sorry asses. But remember, they possess an immortal power, and only by taking their souls will you truly defeat them. Isn't the whole point of, point of immortality is that you don't have this happening to you, and uh, clearly they have a weakness? I'm just saying, I haven't thought this through. Good luck trying to equip anything. You can technically equip the retractor. It, it really doesn't do anything. You can you can hold on to it, but it really doesn't do anything on the side. Let's talk to the jaunty. I'm apparently still a slowpoke though. Oh my gosh, they gave me a hint telling me I could use the teddy bear. What can I do for you, Michael? I have entered the asylum. A truly terrible place. Far more dreadful than even the most twisted mind could have imagined. Oh, I suspected as much. Nettie has informed me that I must find a way to reach the five from within the asylum. It would seem that the serial killers Thomas Deacon profiled for us are, indeed, preparing for the crossing over of the Dark Soul armies. I know that you and I may pass freely between the worlds of Dead Side and Live Side, but what of the five? How is it that they have been able to Does Johnny just become a regular earthworm when he goes into the real world? Uh, well, there was that little incident with Tommy Lee's undead gang a while back. Seemed like an aberration at the time, but thinking about it, could have been a trial run. You know, this may sound crazy, but I think you should be looking for a corpse. Or five of them. Five corpses? The way I see it, you trap two souls and keep them in a state of flux between the worlds. One in dead side, the other live side. Neither can cross over from one plane of existence to the next, nor pass beyond. 
Ego a schism of bridges formed between the worlds. So, yes, you're looking for five ritually slaughtered corpses somewhere in the asylum. Johnny, there are a great many corpses in the asylum. Granted, but these will be special in some way, in a special place. Man, God, it's like we haven't you seen to them find already. Your way across to these psycho loonies. You better have your shadow powers at the ready. I got a feeling you're gonna need him. That is a bit of a hint, though. But yes, if you do indeed, as I've said, if you do indeed go in, make sure that you got your your shadow powers, which you don't have. Also, they casually start spawning an enemy here. It's not exactly that strong, and we still we're still only level three on the shadow power. But we're getting there. It is a little, a little annoying that you gotta keep like spawning back there if you wanna keep going through the hub world. But all your progress is still, you know, you've opened up all the doors and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> there is indeed, by the way, a cutscene once you get... There are three pieces of uh, a, uh, a mythical... Well, I, I guess the thing you need in order to bring your shadow powers to the real world, to the live side. This is one of those pieces. Uh, there is a unique line of dialogue if you somehow get through basically the whole game without even picking up any one of those. That one is painfully obvious, it's right there, so... Uh, although you did need level 3 to open it up, so... Speaking of which, also level 3. He is indeed the Lord of Deadside. Uh, but yeah, the part of Counter-Strike 2 that really does irk me is that, um, yeah, not only do we lack, uh, the, the gun game, uh, we lack, uh, the battle, the drop zone, the battle royale mode, we lack, um, many of the, the maps that you probably are holding on to, uh, for some odd reason I can't download workshop maps, they're not see I don't think they work, and I'm not 100% sure if they're natively compatible or not, which is a bit of a shame, because, uh, on the topic of games working in other engines, just no, uh, the Quake 2 remaster, despite being a, on a completely different engine 26 years later after Quake 2 came out, is directly compatible with all Quake 2 maps that didn't rely on code. Because the code, unfortunately, is not actually portable, so... Uh, that's a little bit of a downside of uh, Quake 2's uh, APIs, anyways. Um, here's a little area. We've got a level 7 door. Is a level four door, so we can't continue on. Uh, this wonderful just structure in the middle, little cocoon, I guess. And uh, finally, an actual bridge leading to another level. It's been a while since I've taken a bridge to a level, hasn't it? Spoken of in whispers at the dead side margins, in the hushed and shivering tones of the lurking, lurching revenants. These ancient places, blood temples to the lower where the Dark Souls did find their secret corner, hidden by the Sanguinary Sisters steeped in voodoo lore. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the Sanctuary of Stone and Fire, or just the Temple of Fire. Uh, Tatcha, as it says. Uh, effectively, there are three temples in this game, and they will each grant a special ability to handle fire. I guess they're, they're all fire based. It's a bit, it's a bit weird. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is a uh, sort of, well, I don't know if I'd exactly call it like the sanctuaries in Rayman where it's like a, you know, a proper checkpointing of the story. Um, but it is definitely something where it's like, yeah, you know, this is a, uh, Sort of a major landmark of the of the game of some kind. We got all these little side routes, side little corridors all over the place, but that pool that I walk past, that's basically where you need to go. There's nothing really to get around other than uh, more caddos, which are always welcome, as well as also being uh, a little bit um, magically large waterfalls. You're also going to come across. Uh, these, uh... What are these? I mean, you could see that you're, you know, you're locking onto them somehow. I guess, how would I describe these? To be, like, cloth walls? Little cloth doors? We've got a five as well. How many, uh... Dark Souls do you need for five? Uh... Well, you need 
7 for level 3, and then you need an additional 8. So you need 15 to get to level 4, and then another 8 after that to get to level 5, so 23. Yeah, we're gonna keep seeing these flame things all over the place. I'm not sure if, uh... It's in this level. I, mm, I don't think it is. We might have to backtrack that, but... Oh, I'll just keep going. Keep on rolling, keep going. You know. Again, the music. Moody. Love it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit upset that, like, yeah, Counter-Strike 2 does have fewer features. Now, granted, the core of Counter-Strike is still there. Unlike Overwatch 2, which removed the two CP maps because the professional players don't like it. Listen, I'm a scrub. I enjoy Temple of Anubis. Is it unbalanced? Yeah, 100%, but, like, I enjoy it. It's chaotic. And with a good enough push, it's like, hey, if I win that push, I've beaten, you know, adversity. You know? The odds are against me, and I've still won. It's, like, obviously, Counter-Strike has, like, unbalanced maps where uh, CT generally has an easier time than the terror side, but... Uh, you know, like... The balance is that both teams play both sides, so... Yeah. Uh, this is a bit of an interesting kind of chamber, a bit of a design to the dungeon. Um, and I'm gonna use the term dungeon very freely here, because, uh, this is sort of like a Zelda dungeon. Also enjoy that, uh, that little... Kind of in the music. Um, but, uh, the main goal of this temple is that there's, uh, well, there's three stages, basically. This first stage is opening up this, uh, staircase. Also, the sisters will continuously keep awaking. These are just gonna be pains. They, they, they die. They get there, but you, you see, they, they're throwing stuff at you. They mean a bit more business than our typical enemy usually has, so... Gotta keep an eye out, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna constantly be waking them up every time we do anything. Um, so yeah. Uh, this one bit, I will say this is a bit of a... I wish the game telegraphed this a little easier, because to me, I didn't quite know what was going on. I magically had, uh, there's four of these doors as you go up the room. I magically had one of these open. I didn't realize you literally just shoot them. You just shoot them. I know, it's, it's a... It's, it's a journalist, uh, mode of me to not just shoot the thing, but I legit spent quite a while dancing around before I realized, yeah, you can shoot them, so... Yes, I know, I didn't pick up that 2 thing. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm super disappointed that Counter-Strike 2 doesn't have all the features. And, uh, for me as well, I'm not- The community servers don't seem to work for me. The browser doesn't seem to show any Counter-Strike 2 servers. Uh, at least for the few days that I've tried, uh, playing it for. Um, I can click Counter-Strike Source, or regular Counter-Strike, in the server browser, which, by the way, it opens up in its own independent window, which is just pulled from Steam. It's a little annoying when you've got the game full screen and it suddenly just minimizes the heck out to, uh, enable, you know, to, to do the server browser. I get why it's just, uh, it's kind of, you know, the usability isn't quite there compared to what it previously was. Um, and it always hurts when something was better in some way and then it's sort of been backtracked. Um, and I guess that's a general thing, is that all, like, newer video games sort of have that problem, where, uh, they, you know, uh, and I, I was, I was thinking about this, and I need to look into it a bit more as to why specifically, but a lot of, like, newer video games don't have, um, or, like, they've changed features so that, um, there we go, Sisters Awaken, because I pressed the button. Um, a lot of newer video games have their rendering pipelines changed in such a way that it prevents them from leveraging uh, traditional anti-aliasing forms. Now, Counter-Strike 2 still allows you to use SMAA, uh, so um, I assume it's still sort of along the right lines, along the old lines, uh, but there are weird performance quirks. Uh, I don't know what's going on in particular, but people with older graphics cards are having, not too old graphics cards, but 
uh, at least like Ampere or RDNA 2, RX 6000, RTX 3000, they have having better times than the people on the RTX 4000s or the, the RX 7000s. They're having a little bit of a better time. Um, some of it could be because maybe the newer graphics cards don't do old anti-aliasing as well. Maybe that's something that people will need to investigate. Um, uh, I've also noticed there's some horrendous, like, compilation stuttering, uh, like, shader compilation stuttering, um, whenever you scope a weapon. And I keep seeing people say this is an RDNA 3 problem. I have an RTX 4070 Ti, and I can reliably turn off the game, turn it on again, go into a map, and for every weapon on every map, I will get a little bit of a, like, it's a quarter second, which is rather noticeable, and the game doesn't technically, uh, you know, understand what's happening under the hood in the back, so I miss data, it syncs up, and then suddenly, oh, I'm dead, and I didn't even see a bullet go off, because the game spent its time rendering when I scoped, which is often at is critical weak. moments. Very annoying. Um, but yeah, no, that, that is happening on my graphics card, so I can at least attest. Yeah, it, it, it keeps happening. And it and it doesn't save the shader between times I run the game. So it seems that perhaps Valve need to, like, you know, do some pre-compilation setup. I know uh, Steam, you know, has that support, so we just need to figure out that one. Uh, FSR looks terrible. I don't need to use it, it just, it just looks terrible for me. Um, that's a general comment. Uh, oh, oh, and that also reminds me as well. I, I might as well add. Um, I tried uh, the FSR frame generation uh, as part of the new FSR 3 uh, model uh, in the Forspoken uh, demo. You can you can try it in the demo. Um, buying that game, that game is expensive. And I don't know really if anyone still plays Forspoken, so I feel like a lot of people just booted up just to do the, the demo. And hopefully when more games use FSR, then we don't have to use Forspoken as the example, because Forspoken has a lot of performance quirks well before I needed frame generation. But in particular, I just want to mention the frame generation component. Um, it doesn't work for me. Uh, not because, uh, like, oh, like the game crashes. It doesn't crash for me, but it's... How can I explain? Um... People on Reddit are idiots, and, uh, <laughs> like, they're all talking about how, like, oh, they're getting, like, 80% or maybe nearly doubling their FPS. Some people say, hmm, I'm getting, like, weird stuttering. And I, I, it baffles me that I have not seen a single person, when they have expressed concern about how their performance is going when they turn on the frame generation, not a single person has measured the frame time they like when they talk about the stuttering like i just took intel present mon i know uh, amd feature on an nvidia graphics card using an intel monitoring tool or intel sponsored monitoring tool um uh but like i use present mon to benchmark the frame times and all that stuff for 10 seconds and what i got was every odd frame so the actual frame uh, rendering, you know, for example, in this one bit, got, uh, took 45 milliseconds. That is uh, not good. 33 milliseconds gets you around 30 frames a second. Um, so 45 means it's like 21 or something. It's not a great frames per second raw. Uh, at least when I max out all the settings and stuff like that. That game does run like butt, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Because uh, it doesn't exactly look amazing for what it's trying to do. And uh, that ties in my point of Counter-Strike 2, where it's like, you know, games are, you know, moving their rendering pipelines because they want to support some new features. But at the cost of some of these are, like, really, like, horrendous for, like, when you aren't using the settings. And the engine still has all this overhead because it wants to try and support these other features. And then you don't use the features, or well, the game does use the features, and they're not like visually meaningful, but they were using the features anyways. Maybe it means something, like maybe the, the, the developers have, uh, um, you know, developed, uh, sorry, the developers have, have developed, that is true. Uh, but maybe the developers are like, oh, you know, it's an easier development pipeline if uh, we use this thing. I'll accept that, sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I get 45 milliseconds on every odd numbered frame. 
on every even number frame, I get 0.2 milliseconds. That could mean 5,000 frames a second. But the problem is, is that it's offset by a 45 millisecond frame every other frame. Uh, so ultimately, what I get is, like, it's on average 22 milliseconds to... Oh, I just walked right back out. It's on average 22 milliseconds to render a frame. 22 milliseconds to render a frame? Oh, that seems not too bad. That's like 40-something FPS. But, no, one of the frames renders incredibly quick, and one of the frames takes its sweet time rendering. Um, that is because, I believe, it takes virtually no time on my machine to create the intermediate frame used by the frame generation, but it still takes a forever amount of time to generate the original frame. And ultimately, I don't think I ever see the original frame, because every time the original frame is ready to present, within a quarter of a millisecond, a new frame is ready and the old frame is just ignored. Which means I am not getting any frame smoothing. Instead, I am constantly viewing only the the interpolated frames, which means it looks worse, it still, it runs worse because there's, uh, like the base frame rate is already lower than it used to be. Uh, it's got a higher amount of latency, and at the end of the day, it's like, there's all this computing power put towards, like, all this, it's like not worth it, I might as well turn the feature off, but, like, yeah, like, the, the actual FPS count is higher, because on average, yeah, there are more frames being rendered. But there's not more frames being presented. Sometimes people will refer to this as frame pacing, which is along the right lines, but I think really what one should be saying is... Uh, I, I don't know if this is an official term, I'm gonna call it frame skipping, where basically a frame is ready to present, but never does. And I think that's an, a very, very important thing to note, because Ultimately, you can't present more frames than your monitor can actually, like, you know, update at. If you've got a 60Hz monitor, if your game is running higher than 60Hz, you won't see more frames. And ideally, what you want is some form of synchronization. You want to see your game run at... Or, sorry, you, like, when your game has a frame, you preferably want the game to evenly balance out the next frame at roughly, the you know, the same amount of time to that next frame. If you render two Great. frames so close to each other, you know, you're not gonna see really one frame. You're missing one frame. Or, like, you know, it's gonna feel stuttery because one frame is on screen for much longer than the other one. Uh, you'll have, like, you know, I don't know, it, it feels bad. We'll just say that. Uh, also, my nose is starting to run. Nice. <sighs> oh my gosh, it always happens. The spring, eh. Uh, I got two and a half hours in the stream without needing to, like, suffer my nose, and now it's happening. <laughs> Classic. Um, also spikes all over the place. Uh, I'm just gonna go up this staircase like usual. How about that? I know there's more doors. I'm gonna come back here just later on this level. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, like... People on Reddit were not describing the situation, at least if they're experiencing the same thing that I am. Look at that, six buttons by the way, there's one just at the top here, so if you ever think you, if you, if you, ever think you were missing a button, there's one at the bottom, one at the top, and then four doors as you work your way up. So, lots of buttons. And more sisters, why not? They have indeed awoken, that is indeed what they do. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know, I couldn't see anyone describing this in the same way as I am, and on top of that, like, I feel like something is up because I haven't seen any big YouTuber mention it like that, but I've got the data, I can reliably turn off my game and turn it back on and I still get the same thing. Um, yeah, the thing I was mentioning, the warp is here by the way, uh, the thing I was mentioning about the, uh, like, syncing it to your refresh rate is, uh, if you're, yeah, so if your monitor is 60 hertz, ideally, you know, what V-Sync does, for example, is that V-Sync prevents frames from being displayed to the driver mid, 
uh, mid draw. So if you're like, you know, say for example you're running the game at 90 uh, frames a second on a 60 hertz display, what that means is that for every uh, two images that your screen can present, your computer's actually trying to render three. And uh, that might mean that every second frame, there's actually like half a frame sort of already being drawn, and it's just casually, it shows up. That's what tearing is, when two frames, or rather, you know, one frame buffer somehow has the content of multiple frames. What VSync does is that it tells your computer, don't, you know, don't send the frame to the buffer if uh, the screen isn't ready yet. So it goes, if it hasn't been 60, you know, hertz, so 16 milliseconds, don't, uh, that, that jump always gets me. The music's ramping up, so you know, you know this is serious. We got a corridor full of pendulums, uh, guillotines, incredible stuff. Uh, for reference, we have continued to see more and more, like, I think the only, like, tool that I've actually gotten in my inventory is, uh, this thing. Oh, okay, and the key, the key. But the, the, like... You know, the, the baton. So, <laughs> we've constantly been passing, like, all the, um, you know, the places that you can use the other items. That's what makes us very Metroid-y. Uh, unlike Metroid, it's not a brightly colored door, so you won't exactly know quite what you're using. Uh, but here we are, the final room. Uh, the reason why I say there's three stages to this place is because, uh, the trek back is enough of a collection journey as well. Um, so yeah, uh... So VSync tells your computer to not, uh, are tools and weapons- No, nothing's missable. There is nothing missable in this game. You can always backtrack to virtually every part of the game, um, to get more st stuff, so. Uh, don't feel bad if you miss anything, um, and you'll probably, in fact, 100%, you cannot get really everything in any level, really. They, <laughs> they put so many goodies, um, I'm saving the, uh, the serial killer levels for the end because uh, you don't get any, like, tools to uh, continue on um, in those levels, so you might as well just save them until the end. Uh, but yeah, we've got this nice little pedestal in the middle, and what we've got to do is go around and hit five buttons? I think it was five. Uh, so yeah, so VSync tells the computer, hey, yeah, don't show the frame if it's not ready, or if, if your display isn't up to up to that yet. Uh, you might have heard of G-Sync or FreeSync or just variable refresh rate. What that does is that it actually synchronizes from the monitor through the display protocol uh, to your computer of whether the frame is available and then your computer can tell the monitor whether a frame is available. And so the monitor itself can actually not update at 60 hertz. It actually might go, well, it, it's more ideal for like sub frame rate, but it actually goes, oh, if you're rendering at 50 frames a second, your your monitor doesn't have to update at 60 hertz because if you update at 60 hertz and you're, you know, playing a game at 50 frames a second, that means for every five frames, one of the frames gets updated twice onto the screen, which means it lasts for twice as long on the display. Uh, the videos on the Super Mario Galaxy graphics, interesting. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario Galaxy is uh, king for graphics. Um, so what variable refresh rate does is that the monitor itself can actually update slower because why show 50 hertz or 50 frames a second on 60 hertz when it's smoother on 50? So that's the benefit of that. Um, uh, but yeah, even then it's like, yeah, the total number of FPS, whatever you're doing, is based on what the graphics card is rendering. The water effects are just scrolling. Oh yeah, 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 it's all textures. Do it with a good texture and it's great. We stand on the center pedestal and uh, Shadow Man is zapped by lasers because of course, you know, how do you get special abilities if uh, you don't have fancy particle effects? He jumps down and notice the new tats. He's got new tats on uh, his left and right. This shows up on the poor screen as that icon, which all I can describe as is a guy with massive arms and tiny legs. Uh, but that is the the toucher component, basically. This are now this now allows you to touch very very hot things, such as these blocks that have been plaguing us since the very very first Dark Souls of the game. You can finally navigate back and awaken more sisters, because of course 
Of course, you gotta I like more sisters. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, a an actual required tool in order to continue the game. Uh, even if you did manage to collect more Dark Souls, which I think you'd be cutting it very fine to get 15 Dark Souls, because we've gotten 12. You'd be cutting it very fine to get 15 Dark Souls without this. This game is very brutal. How many, like, Dark Souls you can actually acquire with the current tools, you probably need to collect most of the ones available. Um, whereas if you play, like, Mario 64, it's like... The, um, the, the wing cap blocks, or the, or all the blocks, really. The question mark blocks? The cat blocks. I don't know how they're called. Um, they're all, like, you only need, like, how many stars in that game are actually restricted by the caps? I feel like it's, like, 12 out of 120. It's not a very high number. You could probably beat the entire game without getting any of the caps. Uh, you think you need one? Which one do you need? Because backwards jumping. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, yes, you can touch these. We haven't really seen any walls like this, but yeah, uh, there's fire on this. Don't worry. I've got fire arms, even though technically I jumped over that. Uh, no, it, it's still fire arms. It's okay. Uh, this is not, I repeat, uh, very first one. Oh, so like the wing cap. I mean, yeah, in theory, it's like, yeah, if you're doing, because I've done a 16 star run and you don't get any caps in that run. Um, yeah, what, whatever you may think, even though you have the ability to touch fire, you do not have the ability to stand on fire. Don't, don't stand on the fire. That confused me the first time I played the game. I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, the, the frame generation thing in this one example, this is not a condemnation of FSR frame generation in general but in this one example it doesn't work for me i it, i do not get a benefit from this it's just a worse experience and um no matter what i try and do what graphics settings i tweak whether v-sync is on in the game whether g-sync is on in my graphics card control panel uh whether i run the game at a lower resolution uh whether i run the game uh at a faster frame rate i tried the game originally with uh the fsr um, upscaling on its like ultra performance and it does sort of look like butt. Uh, it sort of looks like butt on DLSS as well. The, the actual upscaler is very comparable to DLSS so I've got no preference either way in this example but I haven't played the game enough um, to really know and I don't own the game so I don't really have an intention to play or spoken more. Um, the upscaling for both is good but the frame generation which is only FSR in this game is uh, atrocious. And yeah, I can I can run the game at a lower resolution or use the upscale, turn down settings, get a higher raw frame rate, to which the frame generation still reports it's improving my frame rate, but yeah, when I was playing the game at 90 FPS base, and then it was like doubling to 180, it's like, well, you know, I can't tell really, because my monitor's only 144, I can't tell really that it was like not really hitting 144. If I had them side by side, it'd probably be fairly obvious. Uh, yes. Do you like pushing blocks? No matter which way you go, the game is making a note. Yes, you can indeed, um, push blocks and, uh, touch firewalls. It might not necessarily be a blocker. I mean, I guess it is, because, I don't know, if we check this. Two Dark Souls in the Asylum, two Dark Souls in the Wasteland, there's one in the, uh, you know, Pass of Shadow. There's none of the other levels, but there is still one Dark Soul that we're just yet to acquire in this level, so worth getting. I like how we're in this room and there's just all these like fake out walls. I used to think, I actually, when I was playing this game for the first time, and it was only really last year, so it's not like that long ago. I'm like scouting everything for like where these Dark Souls are and I'm like trying to find meaning in like all these little tiny chambers. I'm like, okay, there's moons on the wall. Is there like a hidden puzzle involving the moons? No, no, no. It's purely for aesthetic. It's like trying to understand the rules of the game. There's so much that like you're trying to figure out. You're trying to understand. I've been picking up a lot of caddos already. music really, you know, gets going, it's jamming, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Counter-Strike 2. 
I do wish uh, the performance was better. This this one door has the stairwell that allows you to continue. Very nice, fun level design. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Thanks guys. Uh... <laughs> there we go. So yeah, Counter Strike Two. I like I like how you can see um, this. Uh, we cannot get to uh, <laughs> those two Dark Souls. We cannot get to them just yet, so we're gonna have to leave this level. Um, that was a bit precarious, wasn't it? Uh, but, uh... Yeah, I don't think I can... No, I, don't, I can't get it now. No, nah, so... Let's just go back to, um... To dead side. Let's get... Let's push that one box. We'll call it a stream. That was the wrong dead side warp. Um... I know it takes, like, a hot second to... Like, a minute to walk it. Why walk when you have fast travel, you know? So... But yeah, moral of the story of all the topics of the stream. Uh, one, all games have some value, even if it is a bad game. Uh, cut content, it's always fun to explore. And uh, I'm hoping that this uh, FSR frame generation technology gets better, uh, in the same way as I know it's been playing catch up to DLSS. But, you know, more technology is always better. Um, Reddit is stupid, as always, I guess. Look at that, there's a dark soul in here. There we go. Now we are level four. We can actually continue on with more areas of the game. I'm actually curious as well, if I just back up to here, um, yeah, you needed a five in order to get the flambeau, which is actually important. It's actually important. Uh, there's a thing called the pointy after a four door as well, which I technically could go back and get, but uh, I think it's best to just get another eight Dark Souls and come back later, I think. And if not, then I'm going to get very caught out. Uh, but yeah, I'll save the game there. Uh, heed no mind to the 21 hour save time. Uh, the game's really only like 13 hours. I think we should be good. Um, also, yes, that is the, uh, the horror of the horror. Little skull. I got soft locked here because uh, I had no ammo. Oh well. Uh, but anyways, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this uh, game or the stream, you can follow me. Uh, I will stream every Monday, 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern uh, Daylight Time now. It's not standard time, it's daylight time. Uh, if you miss part of this, hit hit my YouTube. The VOD will be there very soon, within 12 hours or so. 24 hours sometimes. No, I'll say 12 hours. It's usually there about there. Uh, if you enjoy the game, feel free. Go, go out and get the game. Because every game I play is always something where it's like there's some value to you going out and playing it. Find your own journey. What things do you discover? Did you enjoy it or not? Have you played this game before? Lots of questions like that. Just, you know, comments and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. If you if you liked any... I don't know. I, I've got nothing else to plug. Some people plug merch. Some people plug, like... You know, oh, I've got, like, a... Like, a follow feed for bonus subscribe. I don't know, man. Everyone, everyone, if you view my stuff, you have just as much viewing privilege as everyone. And I just make this stuff so that uh, hopefully someone out there enjoys it. So if it's you, congrats. Feel special. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. See ya.